Okay, guys, uh, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly Dungeon Master today. Today, uh, we were going to be continuing on with our uh, Galantry um, Pathfinder 2nd Edition campaign, but unfortunately, we were, were down a couple of players, and then we were expecting to be down one more player, so I prepped something as a replacement. Uh, and that replacement is what we're going to be doing uh, this morning. This morning, we're going to be rolling up some characters and introducing some new players to... Robert Schwab's awesome Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, now, um, with me today are going to be the stars, or perhaps I should I say the victims of the Sh uh, Demon Lord, um, who are the regular stars of our uh, Pathfinder campaign. I'll go the order I've got you guys in here, and um, why don't you guys tell me uh, what familiar level of familiarity you have with Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, so, Brandon, you're up first. Uh, hi, I'm Brandon. I, um, I have Shadow of the Demon Lord. I have never actually played it, though, so uh, this, I am very looking forward to this. Nice! And next up is Andrew. Oh, Andrew, you're very quiet for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure the, the levels in your mic went wonky. Sure, so we'll, you know, we'll come right back to you. He just wants to have a dramatic final entrance. <laughs> uh, next up is John. Hey everyone, I'm John. Uh, I have uh, zero experience with this game, didn't even know it existed, but we're going to randomize character creation. It's going to be fun. Love it. And next up is Arlen. Um, hi, I'm Arlen, and uh, like Brandon, I have I have a shitload of the PDS for this game, apparently. Yeah. Um, but I've never played it, so I'm excited to try it out. Awesome. And Andrew, let's check in on you. How are you... It's still very, very quiet. I'm not sure. If you go into your uh, the settings in your computer, what sometimes happens is the levels fuck up on the on the uh, mic. If you go into like the control panel and your sound and video options, uh, you can yeah. go in there and then just reset the levels on your mic. Yeah, I'm in there now. It's set to 100. There we go. You're good. There, there we go. go. Yep, you're oh, good. good? Okay. Yep, it's just okay. a matter of things. So, Andrew, you're last but last. You, have you ever heard of this game before this morning? I n I've never heard of this okay. before, so this should be interesting. What I will tell you is that the name Robert Schwab is likely familiar to uh, many of you, if even if you don't know it, because uh, Schwab came to work on d d in uh, 3.5. Uh, he worked a great deal on 4th. He worked on 5th. He has designed the... Um, Song of Ice and Fire role-playing game. Uh, he's got a huge amount of other incredible design credits, and he may be one of the most prolific, if not the most prolific, game creators out there. Uh, this game has an insane amount of uh, material that is uh, is out for it, and the shocking thing about it is that it's all incredible. Like, it's all good. So, um, yeah. So that is what we're going to be doing today. So the, the way the game works, guys, you, let's take a look at our uh, character sheets here. Um... You'll see that you've got only four attributes, uh, and then you've got some derived things, like your health is derived from your uh, from your four core attributes, uh, into, uh, intellect, strength, uh, agility, and will. Um, you have a perception stat as well too, but it doesn't, it's, a, it's derived from your uh, intelligence as well, or your intellect. Um, the way that the game works is there are only 10 levels uh, in this game. Uh, you start at zero, and then what the default way of play is you play 11 sessions, uh, you play starting at level 0 all the way up to level 10, and then you hopefully try and stop the end of the world in the course of playing that. The game is a dark, fan it's a horror fantasy, uh, and it is worth emphasizing that the horror part is the part first, because it is uh, it can be a very unforgiving game <laughs> in cases. Um, there are ways to mitigate it, like we're going to use the optional rules for, um, I think they're called fate points, I can't remember if it's fate points or what, destiny points, I don't know what the hell they're called, but they're the meta currency we use in a lot of our, our other games, and it's ways of, uh, I use the optional rules to sort of stave off um, a lethality, so there we got some ways of getting around it. Task resolution is insanely easy in this. Uh, all you're doing is rolling a d20, and you are adding uh, uh, your stat, uh, and you may be adding some Bane's or boons. A bane is a d6 that is subtracted from that. A boon is a d6 that is added to that. They cancel out, so you're, all you're rolling is either some banes, some boons. Um, you roll the the, bane, the number of banes and boons, and you take the highest number, and you either add it or subtract it. Your target numbers that you're trying to roll against, if you're contesting something, we use their relevant score. So if it's their defense, or it's their will, if you're trying to cast a spell on them, or whatever. Otherwise, it's a 10. 
So it's just a flat 10. If I tell you to make a, a challenge, uh, like a strength challenge or something like that, the DC is always going to be 10 unless you're contesting against someone. So that's the core mechanic of the game. It is very, very intuitive at play. And uh, yeah, um, so let's uh, talk about how we're going to create characters. There's one um, house rule we're going to do, which is at the outset when um, we're making a character, all uh, well, your, your starting scores for your different uh, attributes will be dictated by your ancestry. And the ancestries that are going to be available for this are human, um, are changeling. Changeling are the dis the kind of created descendants of the uh, malevol malevolent fae. So you've got, uh, they can, um, they've got like a shape-shifting kind of ability. You could play a clockwork, which is a, um, which what sounds like kind of like a clockwork steampunk version of the Warforged from uh, Eberron. Uh, you can play a dwarf. You can play a goblin. But the goblins are a little different in this than they are in other things because they are the outcast of the Fae and each has some kind of crazy, you know, um, deformity. You can play an orc, which are these slave soldiers that were bred by this empire far to the south that um, were a breeding of, of a sorceress breeding of humankind and giants and Jotun to create this really powerful, strong race. And uh, not for nothing, the campaign starts with the uh, one of the orc generals killing the emperor uh, and sent casting the uh, the emp the empire into uh, kind of disarray and chaos. Um, do each of you guys have in mind which of those ancestries sounds most interesting to you? I'm gonna roll for it. Okay, so then it is. So let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different professions. Go ahead, or say uh, different ancestries. Go ahead and give us a roll. I I, I should probably add to that. It's like the, a uh, clockwork. The clockwork. The, oh, so the clockwork people actually have like a, a thing in their body they have to twist. To yeah. like to like get them up and like and and then the uh, changelings are piles of like sticks and mud in their natural form. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Andrew, so, they're uh, not like cool, cool. Like some other, some other. So Andrew, uh, you are a dwarf. All right. Cool. Anyone else want to roll randomly? This is the only thing I might pick on randomly. I'm just gonna be human. Okay. Because we have gotta have some humans here. And Arlen. Um, well, I was going to be human if no one else was, but if we've got a human, then oh, I, think I might... Oh, two humans. Yeah, you can have two we, humans. We have two. Sure, let's do two humans. Okay, All okay. Right. <laughs> so then what you guys do is take a look at your... Uh, the starting attributes will uh, be on... For humans, it's on page 12. For clockworks, it's on page 15. And for dwarf, it's on page 17. That's interesting. Clockwork has random attribute scores and fixed attribute scores. Oh yeah, yeah. There's going to be. Uh, oh, sorry. You may that may be the updated version. So, what you've got is. Let me see. Did they? I've got a print-on-demand version as well that was supposed to be the updated version. Maybe yeah. The fix is strength nine, agility eight, intellect nine. Oh, then that's right. No, that's that's correct. What they've they've done since is they've added in a uh, like you know a, a number plus one d three for each stat, and it's kind of. Uh, I don't I don't like it as much. I'd prefer just having the. Okay. The flats uh, number. So yeah. So that that's what yours are. Nine, uh, eight for agility. Nine for intellect. Will and uh, nine for will. And then dwarf. Yeah. Ten for strength. Nine for agility. Uh, blah blah blah. Um. Yeah. Dwarves get a big bucket of hit points uh, to start as well too. Your health is is pretty good. Um. And then what we'll do is let's see here. When. Uh. What you can do as well. Uh, Is there here. any adding points to it? To... Well, you can adjust the scores, uh, but let's do that at the very end, just like okay. in the others, because that way you, you kind of know what your character's uh, professions are and, and so forth. So these are uh, zero-level characters we're making here. And let's see here. Um, let's start with... Uh, one, let me, uh, let's everyone maybe put something in chat for when we're done. Uh, we're going to roll random roll everything together. So don't worry, uh, Brandon. Yeah, this, we're going to go through background for each person and discover what it is as we go. Um, so, okay. yeah. Let's that just, was my role for the background. I, I, I right thought there. it might be the case. So let's just, once, yeah. once everyone's got all their stats entered in, uh, oh, we okay. will Fair we'll go I through. I haven't done that either. Oh, I guess that's already in there because I'm human. Everything's 10. Yeah. 
Okay, I've got. Well, you get a plus back. one if you're a human to something. But I think we're gonna decide that later, right? Uh, adjustment no, or? that's the Should adjustment we... when you put one up, down, up, uh, one by, up by one, one down by one. Oh no, no, I mean like the, the humans get an add of one to one of theirs. Do you want us to do? Yeah, that you got to pick that. You... No, you got to pick that now. Oh, pick, pick, pick that now. Yeah. Okay. The adjustment is oh, is pick... a way to kind of offset uh, the vagaries of fate. Um. Yeah. Okay. That's never a bad idea. So, and while you're doing that too, I'll explain for those who, uh, for John and for um, Andrew, the way that the game uh, works in for leveling up is they have in, in place of classes, they just call them paths. And what what it has is you have a path, a novice path you pick at level one. You have an expert path you pick at level three. And then you have a master path you pick at level seven. So what your character ends up being is this cool combination of kind of four different ideas. Where it's your ancestry, your um, novice path, your expert path, your mastery. And then as you level up, you get different abilities from those different factors as you go along. And you are completely free to mix and match whatever stuff you want. So you can do warrior at first level, and you can do, you know, wizard at, at level three, and then you can do, I don't know, like scald at level seven and have this interesting kind of mishmash of, of character. I did that for mine when I, I played yeah. this game through from uh, level zero to level ten, and I played a Jotun uh, giant who went from like um, he was a bouncer at a bar, and then he became a warrior, and then he became a ranger, and then he became a oh, no, he was a Jotun, so he didn't have a, a profession, but he became a ranger, and then he became a scald, so I was a battle bard. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, so then let's go through with the I'll go through the order we've got the ancestries in the book here. Uh, so, uh, Andrew, or uh, Brandon, you rolled a 16 for your background. Yeah. Oof. You foiled a plot to kill someone important, or you brought a killer to justice. Mm. Um, Andrew, give us a d20 roll. Let's see your... Ooh, 19. Probably the highest I'll oh, roll. Oh, I got... Oh, see, so we'll go with yeah. We'll go with your background first, and then we'll do the because there's some other dwarf factors we get to roll for you. Nineteen. You were the rightful heir to a stronghold overrun with the enemies of your people. Classic. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> My uh, cousin Balin will give us a royal welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, John. Go ahead and give us a d20 roll. So this will be your background here too. Yeah. Your soul was plucked from the underworld before it could forget its former life. Start the game with 1d6 insanity and an extra profession. <laughs> Say what now? Yeah, so clockworks are created by stealing the souls of the dead and fusing them into the clockwork apparatus. I but saw that one and I immediately wanted it. To be yeah. <laughs> so good. So you've only got one uh, insanity. All right, that's great. I'm loving uh, and, the, guy, the, the dice gods right now. This is cool. Arlen, give us a, a d20 roll. 13, eh? Ooh, you traveled 15. extensively. You speak one additional language. Nice. Interesting. Okay. So let's do... Um, let's see here. To get everyone... Because personality and stuff is all... Oh, they, yeah. They got it mixed all over the place. Let's do this. I'm going to do the order the humans have it here. Um, personality. So then uh, we're back to Brandon again. Give us a 3d6 roll. Oh, there we go. A 10. No, no that was... That was me. Oh, it was you. Okay, so um, uh, Brandon, give us a 3d6 roll. All right. Yeah, we're, we'll hit all the tables. It's just the... Um, Ten. Ten. Uh, human personality, you put your interests and those of your oh. friends above all else. That ch that changes what I was going to do for the uh, for the background story, too. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Andrew, let's see your dwarven personality. Um, is that what we're doing now? Personality? Yes. Uh, 3d6, please. Alright. I was going for my age on a different table, so... Okay, sure. Uh, Alright, seven. You believe other people covet your wealth. It is your duty to protect what is yours at any cost. So you're the, like, angry Romanov traveling across Europe with the last of your treasures. <laughs> 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 Uh, John, uh, let's see what your, um, personality is. 3d6, please. A six. Your body gives you power and strength. You use it to enforce your will on others. 
Cool. Okay, and I'm given a bully. That, I wonder what your your past life was like then. You could have been like an enfeebled old man or woman. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, and then see. Arlen, uh, would you give us a 3d6 roll? Seven. Oh. Uh, you look after yourself first and foremost. You're not above double-crossing friends. <laughs> this is not looking good. We're a real band of rogues, boys. Yep. <laughs> I guess so. Except yeah. Brandon. I no, I, I have two. I have two. Okay. My interests are bad. Other than my friends above all else. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so now, um, human religion. Uh, so we'll talk about what religion is in a moment here. So, Brandon, give us a 3d6 roll. Alrighty. Uh. An 11. Ooh. You belong to the cult of the new god. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Weird. So the the um, yeah, religion in the setting for, or the default setting for Shadow of the Demon Lord is basic for humans is divided into two kind of big areas. There is the old faith, which is like the collection of kind of like more like nature or, you know, um, pantheistic kind of gods. Uh, and then there is the cult of the new god. Which is uh, has this uh, martyr named Astrid as the uh, um, the prophet for that, um, and so that means that you are part of the new faith. Um, Andrew, let's see what uh, orcs, of course, or orcs, uh, dwarves, of course, do not follow that. Whereas, oh, you don't have a religion thing. Interesting. That so, works too. Yeah. Well, yeah. they worship ancestors. Uh, the dwarves, like, there's an actual priests who get power from the uh, ancestors. Um, Changeling does not have religion either, so let's just roll for Arlen for religion. 3d6, please. A nine. I'm that you follow the tenets of the old faith. Mm. Badass. Okay. Um, and then let's take a pause here. We'll pause for a moment and we're going to get uh, John's purpose, form, yes. and appearance done here, because the, the, the clockwork has some really neat stuff. So first, John, give us a d20 roll. Okay. Yeah, I rolled for age earlier, so... Okay, uh, we'll get to age in a... We'll get back oh, to I, that. Yeah, okay, 1d20, boom. Uh, 13. Uh, clockwork purpose. You were built to gather intelligence about or assassinate targets. Increase your agility mm. or your intellect by 2. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, then give us a 3d6 roll. Uh, so let's tell us your form. Five. You are s a small spider-like clockwork with functional hands. Reduce your size to one half. You ignore the effects of difficult terrain when you climb. You're three feet tall and you weigh 50 pounds. <laughs> That is awesome. Yeah. I'm not going to use my, my, my body to intimidate others. Wait, I was expecting this, like, this huge, is... all of yeah, a circle sized uh, thing, yeah. but nope. Yeah. Nope. It's nope. a tiny He's clockwork well. murder spider. <laughs> She's shorter than me. Yeah. The Satin R2D2. Yes. <laughs> it's an ideal uh, shape for a spy, really, because that's what he's got to do. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, okay. Clockwork appearance, I think, is my next one. Well, we'll get to the. the everyone has an, an appearance table, so okay. let's just get to the dwarf, because the dwarf actually has something. Uh, your unique, your hatred. So, yes. uh, Andrew, give us a D12 or D20 Ooh. roll. D20, okay. Let's see here. I hope this is good. I hope it's one of you. <laughs> 15. You hate giants. Oh, uh, okay. No. That's 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 fine. I could be a giant slayer, like the like the Warhammer fantasy. Yeah. Oh, I think we know what I look like then. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming red Millhawk. Well, no and clothes. if if your um, what do you call it? If you've been outcast by your uh, you know, by some enemy of the people to of your your people, I, I'm guessing it's giants that drove you out of your uh, that your makes sense. your stronghold. Um, okay, so then. Uh, I guess what we're, we're back sort of on the regular thing here. Let's do ages. So, uh, Brandon, give us a 3d6 for your age. Okay. 15. Oh. Your middle-aged adult, 36 middle to 55 age. years old. Um, Andrew, for dwarf age, 3d6. 11. Uh, you're a young adult, uh, 31 to 50 years old. Young adult as far as dwarfs go, I guess. John, you said you rolled for your age already? Yeah, I got uh, a 10 on it, so... 10 is your experience, 6 to 10 years old. So you spent 6 to 10 years as this strange clockwork murder 
spider. Uh, and then Arlen, give us a 3d6 roll. 13. 13. You're middle-aged. Uh, 36 to 55. Okay. Um, then build. Uh, Brandon, give us a 3d6 roll. Let's see what your build is. 11. Getting all these averages. Average, height and weight, yep. Um, yeah. Andrew, give us a 3d6 roll for your build. 8. You stand a bit shorter than other dwarves. So maybe the same size as size is R2D2 over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three feet tall. Okay. Oh, God, so more BB8. <laughs> and uh, John, you're... Oh, hold on, we've already rolled that. We've already rolled that. Uh, I think my form was so we just have your appearance. So we'll come back to that when we do everyone's appearance. Um, Arlen, uh, let's roll your height. 3D6, six. Six, please. Oh. I'm short. <laughs> you are short. <laughs> you're short. Awesome. Okay, then uh, let's do a last appearance. So, Brandon, give us a 3d6. See what your guy right. looks like. A Ooh. six. You consider... Most consider you homely. Not quite ugly, oh, but okay. quite a bit worse than plain. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping Fair people enough. will terrify Okay, and then uh, uh, Andrew, give us a 3d6 for your appearance. An 11. Uh, you take better care of yourself than most dwarves and keep your facial hair well-groomed. I mean, I am an heir after all. Absolutely, yeah. Um, John, uh, give us a uh, 3D6 as well for your clockwork appearance. 10. Uh, you have a mere suggestion of facial features. <laughs> so. I'm the perfect assassin bug. <laughs> and uh, Arlen, give us a 3D6 for your appearance. 10. Ten. Nope, plain Jane as well, looks like. Yep. Uh, you're perfectly average in appearance. You look like everyone else. Okay. All right. Uh, so then, well, the next thing we do, guys, is everyone starts with two professions. And this is sort of what reflects, like, your life up until this point. And then... Um, um, question, uh, Kevin. Yep. Since I can add two to my agility or intellect, can I do that? Do I do that now? Or yes. Do yeah, you do that now. Yep. So you kind of have to... You don't get to... I'm going with agility because I'm a spider. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, I mean, the really? agility, 10 is the average. Uh, every point below 10 is a minus 1 to your roll. Uh, every point above 10 is a plus 1 to your roll. So. Well, I got a 10 agility. That sucks. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a giant steampunk robot thing, right? So, like, that, they don't move super lively. Okay, so let's do... Uh, Brandon, let's start with your professions here. Uh, okay. you, and I think humans get one extra one, don't they? Uh, they can either get that or an extra language. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm probably going to take another profession. Well, we'll see. See? Okay, let's cool. Do the, let's do the so first So we'll do these one at a time here. So give us a first, yeah. uh, Brandon, a D6 roll and then a D... Actually, yeah, and then a D20 roll. D6 and then a D20. D6. So academic. Interesting. Academic. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and then 18 is religion. Oh, man. With well, you being... Okay. Well, that explains my call to the new god, baby. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Andrew, give us a d6 roll and a d20 roll. So four Actually, is Marshall. Not surprised with a dwarf. And then 11. Patroller is the profession. Interesting. So you, though you may have been an heir to something, it sounds like you're actually working like, you know, the low level of... Um, uh, what do you call it? The lowest level of... Uh, uh, martial tasks. Uh, John, give us a d6 and then a d20. Oh, sorry, not controller, patroller. Uh, oh. Okay, so right. three, criminal, that makes sense. And 17 is saboteur. <laughs> so you're at saboteur. Oh, that's great. And then uh, Arlen, d6, d20. Four, Marshall as well. And then an eight. Uh, let's see here. Mercenary. Mm. Okay. And then back to Brandon. Give us a D6 roll. Mm. D6. A six. Wilderness. Interesting. Oh, and weird. Twelve. Okay. Poacher or rustler. Okay. Okay. Uh, Andrew, D6 and a D20. So a two common. 18. Servant or valet? Oh man, how the mighty have fallen. 
Yeah. Yeah. You could have been, you know, I mean, you could have been a bastard child too. You could be this, the <laughs> this, secret. It's, this could be, I mean, air could be in, in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, uh, John, give us a D6 and a D20. Four is Marshall. Interesting. Eight. Mercenary. Mercenary. Yeah. It's your mercenary and saboteur. <laughs> cool. And then Arlen, D6 and D20. One is academic. And 11 is fisher or whaler. Oh, sorry, academic. Hold on. That's not right. Magic. Ooh. Very this cool. I like Arlen's character from uh, PS2. Yeah. Okay, so then... Um, Should I do another... Hmm. So, John, I know you've got one more profession, so oh. give us a D6 and a D20. Yeah, Brandon, which one are you doing? Because I want to do... Marshall and... I don't, I don't know. I think I might... My Four, sure. That's perfect. Patroller. So the, and what you can do is you can note when you're kind of coming up with what your background is, that's the one from your previous life. Okay. So you were a patroller of some kind in a previous life. Um, or, or at least that's part of your character's uh, background in that previous life. Now, for the two humans, you get to decide on whether you're getting an extra language or whether you're getting an extra profession. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Uh, yeah, with my academic background, I feel like I kind of should maybe take language, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do uh Yeah, why not? If you want to do language, I can do background. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do I'll do language. Let's Yeah. yeah so I'll yeah, do yeah, another let's... background. Okay. So D6. A 6 wilderness and 18 tracker. Awesome. You got a real mixed bag of uh interesting things there. Okay. Now, the... the languages in this book? I forgot. Uh, languages are right at the beginning, I believe. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay, and... There was another... So I'm checking one thing here, guys. Languages in the northern room. Here we go. Um... All right, Helena's high archaic. That's the. Okay. Hmm. Professions grant a boon to what you're doing, right? I think so. Th that sound right? That's, that sounds right. I mean, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah, so I think that I'll double check it uh, during the break, but I think that's that's what we do. Okay, so then, um, 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 guys, you have uh, you got your backgrounds done, you got your professions uh, good to go. Now, guys, you can choose to adjust one stat up by one in exchange for reducing one by one. Now, what's going to happen at first level uh, is that you guys will select one of four novice paths. The novice paths will be very familiar to you guys. It's magician, priest, rogue, or warrior. So kind of figure figure whether the first sort of step towards it, uh, towards your, your character's adventuring life, whether it be you're going towards a magician, towards a uh, rogue, towards a priest, towards a warrior. Um, there's a great deal of customization still within that. And then like the rules as written... Um, uh, for the for the full set of rules, there are an enormous amount of extra options beyond that. Uh, like they, they for those listening at home who may not be familiar with uh, uh, Shadow of the Demon Lords, uh, there are books uh, that have been put out for. Let me hear. Uh, there's that. Pursuit of Power. Where's my copy of? Hmm. Is it? Called to serve, natural born scoundrels. No, I'm just going to be random on this. I'm going to roll a d4. Dang it. Rogue. Perfect. I don't know where I put my uh, warrior book, but... Huh. Hmm. 
But what I was uh, going to say is that there are... Oh, here it is. So there are Bread for Battle um, supplements that have come out as well that greatly expand on what your novice paths are. So each of these get offers like 10 extra novice paths for it. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's, to be honest, not necessary. We played for two years without these books being out. Um, but if, uh, if you want to have more variety uh, in your game, you do have the option of accessing that stuff as well. So um, did you guys make your adjustments to your characters? I didn't move anything. Oh, let's see. Then we got to give some like... names and talk, then we'll talk a little bit about who these guys and perhaps gals are. Then we will uh, roll some, uh, or roll to see what your starting equipment is, because that's funny and so, your interesting thing. Uh, so, as, oh, go ahead. Oh. Okay. As a concept, if I was to take will down by one and intellect up, that would make me more vulnerable to like insanity and corruption and stuff. It does. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> So we sacrifice one to gain one elsewhere, you said, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. I, think of, I, might, yeah, I start I might. with Agility 9, uh, and I was thinking about trying to bring that back up, but then I got to take it from somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe yeah. health? Like, you do get... you get a, These stats go up over the course of uh, playing the character, uh, so mm -hmm. it's not like that is the, you know, uh, that is the, your... Whatever you have to start with, that's what you're stuck with forever. Um, it does... You do get uh, quite a, uh, quite, you get options to bring it up, but there, if you want to know what mechanically it means, it means that you every point below ten gives you a minus one to the relevant uh, challenge roll or the attack roll, and every point above gives plus one to uh, relevant mm -hmm. you know uh, attack rolls or challenge rolls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm very tempted to to go the Arlen route on this. <laughs> And Will is what we use to like, target with, with spells too. So, in a lot of cases, uh, so that's especially the mind control I think, shit. I think maybe I'm gonna do that. Increase my agility to give my break even with defense, and then nice. give in to my give in to my hatred. Nice, love it. Give in to the dark side. Okay, that's awesome. Um, all right. So uh, there are suggested names in the the book. Oh, yeah. Let's let's do that first. Then we'll do the wealth and interesting things. Uh, so. Um, do you guys have names uh, for yourselves? And then maybe tell us a little bit about where we think we see these characters at the start of their adventuring career. You can call me Bug. Bug? Yes. Nice. Bug. Mostly because the guy who created me didn't want to give me a real name. Well, also, so that, that has oh. a, a number of interesting implications to it. Uh, for one, the fact that you remember your previous life but are choosing to use the name Bug and the fact that you're choosing to use the name the creator gave you. Hmm. Well, Can yeah. We, is there any possibility that we could roll up for our uh, money first? Because that might determine what kind of name I give myself. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because... So, well, although the number... So the money is your starting circumstances. It's not necessarily where you've lived your life. Right? Oh, like I This, know. this well, is just yeah, where, we're, where, where you find yourself at the start of the campaign. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, uh, you know, like you could have been mugged in a back alley and that's why you're destitute, not because you're like uh, Andrew's character. If he's an heir to a stronghold, I imagine yeah. that where, wherever we find him on the spectrum of the wealth chart, it's going to be lower than where he was at one point. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, but... <laughs> so good. Oh my gosh. Well, wait a second here. Oh, there it is. Well, I, yeah, I still, I still would like to get an idea, though. I don't know. It's just it's inspire me. Because if he got mugged, then I, I want to know, like, why is he getting mugged? Maybe he's hanging out the wrong galleys. What about the rest of you guys? You want to roll wealth, or do you yeah. got names for your characters? Yeah. I, I have a name. Mm, what's your character's name? Mm. I'm going to be Cormac. Cormac. Love it. How about you, Andrew? Getting by. <laughs> get, getting by? <laughs> <laughs> That's your... my wealth level. <laughs> getting by right. you earn enough getting to meet by. all your expenses uh you have a dagger a staff or yeah, club okay. that, doesn't, that doesn't tell me much or sling basic clothing a backpack a week of rations a water skin a tinderbox 1d3 torches and a pouch containing 1d6 copper pieces yeah uh we'll go i'm gonna call myself tomes like that tomes nice okay and then give us a 3d6 roll arlen you go ahead too 
three d six. Okay, Andrew, you are poor. You live in squalid Shocking. conditions, and you're never sure where you're going to get your next meal. <laughs> Shocking. So, but I'm carrying around the key to my family as well. <laughs> yes. You tell anyone who will stop. <laughs> that's, I'm that's, the that's, that's 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 irony for you. <laughs> so your uh, it's on page twenty five. I'll tell you what your starting equipment is. Uh, you have a staff or a club or a sling with twenty stones. You have patched basic clothing, a sack, bread, a water skin, a tinder box, a candle, and a pouch containing two d six bits. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's... Uh, Arlen, you are getting by as well. Uh, John, you have a name for your character? Bug. But, oh, yeah, right, Bug. So go ahead and give us a 3d6 roll, too, please. So your wealth is 10. You're also getting by. So you have um, a dagger or staff or a club uh, or a sling uh, with 20 stones, uh, basic clothing. You, uh, it sounds like you're probably not going to wear clothing. And I don't think you eat as a clockwork. That's handy. I'll probably get a staff, maybe. Yeah. So we used to have, uh, as a great example of how quickly the uh, players of this game start to um, like work in the system, um, one of the characters was playing a, uh, in our first campaign playing this was playing a priest or a um, uh, magician who had a uh, was in the artificer uh, school of magic so they were like using objects and one of the other guys was playing a clockwork when clockworks run down they transform into objects so what they used to do is intentionally wind him down so they could cast the repair spells on him and then wind him up again <laughs> so nice yeah all right. Oh, so, that's a little scary for the clockwork, right? What if you well, yeah. well, I've got more hit points as an object than I do as an actual animated object. So when we um, we did uh, make him make a uh, engineering roll each time too. So like when there was a, a critical failure, something really bad went wrong. Um, so then what um, what we last need to do here, guys, is get your interesting thing. So uh, Brandon, give us a D six and a D twenty roll, please. All right. Misha, nice. D Misha is my name. Okay, D six. You said. Yes, please. D6 and a D20. So D6 is a 4, table 4. Four. And D20 four. is a 4. You have a what tiny page? glass cage. Hmm. What, what page are we on? Uh, pages 26, 27. Okay. Andrew, give us a D6 and a D20 roll, please. D6. D20. Okay, so 3 is table 3 and 17. You have a small bag containing 3d6 teeth, a necklace of 1d6 ears, or 1d6 severed heads tied together by their hair. That's, that's delightful. <laughs> that's giant, giant heads. <laughs> that might be that's a lot of, of, of heads to be walking around with. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. could be smaller heads as well, too, so... There is that. Giant baby heads. The giant babies. <laughs> giant giant baby heads. Good God. Oh, that's messed up. Uh, <laughs> John. Make his messed up. Yeah, yeah, I was going to do until. D60 20. Yeah. <laughs> so, f table 5 like and 18. You have a giant piece of charcoal that radiates menace. Five. Okay, and then Arlen, D60 20, please. Table two, number four. You have a token from an admirer or a lover. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> okay. So then, guys, now the thing we want to talk about is the uh, connections between the, the characters. And the reason this is kind of um, uh, important is because you can actually kind of trigger boons and banes when you are uh, triggering those relationships. So what we have... Uh, why don't you guys... Here, let's do this so we can start our conversation about the connection between you guys um, with an understanding of who we see our characters being. So, starting off with uh, Brandon, who do you? who is Misha? Okay, so Misha is a... Um, he was born and raised in a religious family. Um, never... Um, but he was always more inclined towards the intellectual life, so he became a, a student of religion rather than an actual priest. Um, I think his his uh, thing that he foiled, however, was he was a uh, some of his colleagues as he was studying to get perhaps get tenure in his profession yep. um, were engaging in perhaps some uh, demon lord cultish serial killer, um, you know, kind of parties, and that he deliberately chose to ignore until one of until one of those colleagues got passed up for tenure before him 
Okay. And then that's and then that's when he decided to actually spring this on and bring him to justice. But then he started becoming a lot more paranoid because you know where there's one there there might be several. So he left his academic profession, and since then he's been basically an itinerant religious tutor, um, <laughs> trying to t- teach people in this way. But okay. yeah, I don't think I think even to himself he he thinks of himself as a devout follower of the new god, but really. I mean, he just, he he has a good way to justify all of this to himself, but ultimately, yeah, it's just about himself. So one it's thing I'll say family. to guys is, yeah. as we think this through, because I just find it really interesting to play through yeah. a level zero uh, session and then pick your profession, um, is don't don't tell us where you think they're going to end up in terms of their novice path, because it's not, it's much more interesting to see yeah. like, oh, are they going to be this? Are they going to be that? And then to see what you choose, uh, it's it makes for a really interesting yeah, conclusion. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Andrew, uh, tell us about tomes. Uh, well, tomes. <laughs> uh, tomes is the illegitimate uh, child of, of uh, his his uh, his, king, his dwarven uh, home. Uh, probably he's an heir, but he's probably like I don't know five or six peaceful people down the line. Um, but that quickly, <laughs> when the, when when the giants came, he quickly became the only one left, as yeah. far as he knows. Uh, but he's got nothing, and he's been surviving the last dozen or so years, um, just kind of doing whatever jobs he can find to yeah. uh, stay alive. Huge piece of humble pie. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, especially the circumstances he finds himself in now. Yeah. Uh, Night John, day. tell us about Bug. Okay, so Bug, I'm going to start with what he remembers of his previous life. Okay. Um, he was more of a, a goody two-shoes, kind of like take care of everybody, uh, patrolled around uh, to like, keep everybody safe, but uh, ended up dying horribly um, and ended up in a bad place that he didn't think he would, and that drove him a little bit insane. Well, here's the thing. Um, the There's not really a good underworld. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. he was expecting something else. So the religions lied to him. Yeah, yeah. So when he was uh, ripped out of his uh, afterlife early, um, he seemed to develop more of a uh, <laughs> kind of affection for the, his creator because he saved him from that experience. But then his purposes were turned towards more of the saboteur and spy business, yeah. um, which is a slightly darker path, but he knows there's nothing good on the other side. So he's fully embracing his role as a so we're assuming that his uh, creator is no longer in the picture. Uh, was your creator <laughs> killed? Uh, did you kill your creator? Uh, did... I'm fairly certain uh, he uh, he ended up getting off because of the work I did. Uh, they kind of got back to him, and I disguised myself as a, a you know, an object to uh, get away from notice. Well, okay, so like you can't actually shape shift. Um, yeah, I know. You, you'll just like by object, you would still look like a mm-hmm. giant mo- monstrous. Maybe I, uh, maybe I uh, ran out of charge and just was inanimate until somebody came back and wound me back up. Okay. Yeah, so it could have been like you've got six years of, of recollection, but you spent a good, you know, there's been time that's that's passed uh, mm-hmm. where you were uh, you were wound down. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. Um, Arlen, uh, tell us about, um, uh, shit, I've already, uh, Cormac. Cormac, I'm like, I know it's a C name, Cormac. Cormac. This Cormac. is why I need you guys to change your display names because I can't oh, remember. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I got the attention uh, span of a housefly. Cormac fly. is a, it's a somewhat lax devotee of the old gods. A devotee is a strong word. He he was raised with the old gods, but he his true god is the steel in his hand. Yeah, yeah. Because he's been a mercenary for most of his life, um, including he's got a, a you know Conan style deep distrust of magic. Yep. Um, and he's learned a fair bit about magic in his time as a, as a, as a mercenary. He's got some survival wilderness skills that he's picked up from, you know, maybe, maybe from, you know, a defeat, maybe from leaving before a defeat when he realized that it was going to go that way. It's mm-hmm. kind of unclear. He doesn't really talk about that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, he's got a great frazetta picture where his chainmail is on like the surface of his skin so it looks like he's yeah. got all the muscles bulging through it which is just impossible but looks yeah. cool. <laughs> i think that is more a um uh aspirational uh picture too. oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's not i think 
He's, I mean, he's getting a little old at this point for a mercenary. He's 43 years well, old. Well, what, what I mean more is just that the, it's the chain mails. And I know this only from experience because I don't think I was able to afford really decent armor until I was like fifth or sixth level. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that's so well, great. Maybe, maybe it's even like, like woad paint or something that he sometimes puts on in preparation for battle. Cool. That would be cool. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, the region uh, that we're, let me uh, show you the, Kind of the region that I, I, I kind of see us starting in here is the Northern Reaches. The Northern Reaches are... Uh, the cool thing about the Northern Reaches is sort of... So the elves in this are not like, you know, happy, you know, fey creatures that are devoted to song and whatever else things. They're kind of like a, a completely otherworldly, both in terms of their uh, essence and their uh, their behavior and their thought pattern too. Like they're they have absolutely no respect for human life or, or whatever at all. The reason I mention is because this whole region used to be elven lands, and then humans, as they expanded out and lived here, they drove them further and further away. Um, the elves. Yeah, uh, the northern reaches are also the uh, a region where the... Um, what do you call it? Where the uh, Old Faith really has, has last bastion. If you see further south down, there's the Holy Kingdom. South of that is where the Empire is, and it's the Empire's where the the uh, Church of the New God really began expanding out. So the uh, town of Crossings is likely where we're gonna uh, we'll start the the campaign, or somewhere near there. Uh, Crossings and this whole region here is uh, the ch uh, Church of the New God definitely has a, uh, a significant presence here um, because the for no other reason. The, you see out the north there, where there's like West Hold, Martyr's Point, Neverfall? Those are all outposts against the Desolation. The Desolation is the ruined uh, remnants of effectively like a powerful necromancer witch king. And there, there are undead that just come wandering out of the desert. And the Crusades are there to eliminate the undead that come out and then to run sorties in there. So what that means is from this empire and from the other kingdoms to the south, there's a regular stream of crusaders that go up and with them come, uh, you know, the um, evangelists. Uh, however, because of the deep connection with the Fae and with the kind of the older ways, the old faith, uh, the faith that you follow there, Cormac, that is still very, very true and very present in, um, uh, in this region. Well, of course it's true. It's what my parents told me. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, the dwarf, you're probably, uh, I think it's either, you know, somewhere from the, your kingdom could be somewhere from the south here, like in the Shield Mountains, or perhaps a dwarf hold in the Iron Peaks that fell. Uh, so I'm fine with either of those. Uh, you, you, if you see that there is this big cliff here along the side, that's called the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not, uh, 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 you know, error. There's this huge cliff that cuts its way across the northern part of the continent. So the uh, whole thing's got an escarpment on one side, and then yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, and, and then there's it goes a down. Railroad. Yeah, and there's a railroad that runs. So this uh, the setting itself, like guns are a thing. Um, you know, uh, clockworks are a thing. It's sort of a mishmash of like medieval and renaissance and um you know early industrial uh, kind of uh, stuff and the um uh, the uh, railroad that runs up to foundry that is where uh, basically weapons of war are crafted for the empire for the emperor or at least they were until the death of the emperor at the hands of his orc slave soldiers um so let's let's do this let's talk about the end of the world <laughs> so, one of the things that I thought was most interesting about the game the first time I, I ran this was the random generation of what is the shadow. So the shadow of the demon lord is, the, the idea is that there is this demon lord that is this phenomenally powerful thing. And it can be very, the demon lord can be different from every campaign. And what it is, is it is the the presence or the, the, the end of the world thing that is coming that will be the focus for your campaign, for your your uh, 11 adventure campaign. Um, you can randomly roll what the manifestation of that is, and that tells you. So the, re uh, the reason I found that interesting is because traditionally I've never really liked fey. I've never liked uh, fey creatures or fairy or whatnot. I've never really used them in D&D uh -huh. campaigns. And I randomly rolled the fey as our 
thing in the first time. And I was like, whatever, we'll fucking roll with it and see how it goes. And it turns out they're amazing as adversaries. There's some really, I, I had a lot of fun designing the, the uh, end of the world using those things. So um, what I'm going to suggest, who is, why don't we do this? Uh, someone give me a D4 roll. How about I go back to where I can see your actual things here? There we go. 1d4? Yes, please. A 1. one. So, four, Brandon, one. Brandon, you have the honor of ending the world. Give us a d20 roll. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> d20 roll? Yes, please. 15. Right. I think we know what plot you foiled. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a good point. Yeah, that's probably that might be it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Maybe guys, this is ass. so great. Pandemic. <laughs> A virulent plague creeps across the land, laying low cities and wiping out entire towns. The merciless disease strikes down young and old, rich and poor alike. A few escape, but the refugees carry the plague wherever they go. Plumes of greasy smoke rise from the victims' pyres, and smaller settlements stand empty but for the carrion eaters feasting on the dead and nearly dead. Um, whew. That's incredible. So that's how we know the the end of the world is coming is there is a world ending pandemic that is striking our uh striking that's the dead. For you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although good luck uh, good luck turning your crank when you've only got a spider. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. I needed to get a crow and train it. No, it'll die. <laughs> okay, so then uh, that's we know how the world's going to end um, now. The, the uh, weapons. Let's talk about just filling out the last little bit of things we need to add on your character sheet. Um, does uh, did you guys pick which weapons you're choosing to start with? Oh no, Hold on. I picked a dagger. Uh, where do we? Uh, so it under the starting equipment, which was on page twenty five. Uh, your wealth level tells you what you're starting with. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah doesn't it? Oh, oh, you mean just from the dagger staff or club? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So you're going to pick that, and then the stats for your weapons are on page. Where are we here? Oh, equipment. Here we go. Uh, page 103. And let me see what. Yeah, he's gonna use the sling, I think. Nice. If it's if it's his poacher background. Okay. Finesse means you can use your agility with it. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, agility. I think so. Oh. Yeah, that's how many copper. that's how many copper coins I have. I, I didn't roll that up yet. Okay. Nice. Okay, we got bug. Boom. Oh, 1d6. Never mind. I'll try that again. Oh, I wasted it. Uh, <laughs> oh, one copper coin. F that. That's... Jeez. <laughs> uh, um, does it, uh, what's everybody's elf def uh, base defense start at? Is it like 10 for humans? Uh, it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's based on your, your base defense is based on your agility. <laughs> well, there you go, Brandon. The 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 oh. copper former heir has the opposite amount of gold or copper. Yeah. Than copper. You. Congratulations. Well, you've got some. Well, I mean, yeah. trust fund, baby. <laughs> okay. So no one has uh, no one has any spells as of yet. Uh, so the way we do, uh, you don't count down your hit points. You just add damage uh, as you go, guys. So you'll. Okay. So it looks like Clockwork started with a defense of 13, so that's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you're, you'll be the, uh, at least a start, the uh, kind of tanky I'm the, tanky. I'm the assassin bug that kills you with dex and just eats your damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the most fun roll I have to do in front of everybody. How many random heads am I carrying around? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Two heads. Oh. Three heads. This is. Oh, man. Oh, my. <laughs> 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 All right. And uh, did you guys have any difficulty filling in the information on your the kind of attack matrix for the weapon? 
Damage, boons, banes. Nope, that looks good. Uh, do we add our strength bonus to weapon damage? No. 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 Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Power. But you still get the strength bonus to hit. To hit, yes. It'll uh, and the, depending on like with finesse weapons, you get to choose which of the two you want to use. Um, yep. Just be mindful of. I, I think just because of what you're starting with, you're not. It's not a worry. But certain weapons have uh, certain requirements for strength. Yes. Uh, same thing with uh, certain armor. All right. Hmm, here we go. How do you get a zero or less on an attack roll? How do you get which, sorry? It says, uh, I'm looking at the key thing for clockwork. It says, anytime you get a zero or less on an attack roll. Oh, because if uh, with uh, boons, or uh, banes rather. Ah, gotcha. If you're rolling the bane, then it'll, uh, yeah. It'll be subtracted uh, from the roll, and the 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 sheet uh, automates all that stuff as well too. You guys will like too. Like we'll talk about uh, um, combat if and when we get into it. I think it's a pretty good chance of you getting into it. Um, can we do our bio break? Yes. Uh, yeah. You guys want to do it now? Now or whenever? Uh, yeah. Well, I was gonna do it at uh, se yes uh, in uh, twelve minutes, but if you need now, that's it's fine. Okay, if you I got, need now. Yeah, you know, go ahead, go right ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, stay. Does, uh, does half size do anything uh, strange? I didn't... Say again? Do... Does the one half size do anything weird? Uh, one half size. It. Uh, I think it affects your... Um, hold on. I think it affects grappling, if I remember okay. correctly. Um, size 37. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm completely new to this, so I don't know. Is half as big as a human? Okay. Let's see here. I can't remember if size affects weapons whatsoever. I hope not. Okay, let's see here. Larger and smaller creatures. Here we go. Uh, determine the price of armor for larger or smaller creatures. Multiply it by the creature's size. Okay. So that is uh, one effect. And then, let's see here. Special materials. Ah, so it'll tell you if... Um, what size you need to be for certain weapons. So like a pike, right? Like it says size one, so you can't use that. Otherwise, it's uh, there's no... Uh, f no effect on uh, what weapons you can choose. Okay. Let's see here. I think it might affect your encumbrance as well. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, liquid as a vehicle for caffeine delivery. No, that's that's totally understandable. The amount of times you've had to take a break from my old man bladder uh, is you're more than entitled to your own. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, this is gonna be great. I know I'm doing. The pandemic is f cool. I would never have picked that, uh, and. Jeez. The neat thing about um, randomly generating the stuff, too, is just, like, seeing what would spiral out of that. Like, uh, I've, I've had in... Uh, actually, when the campaign that Steve was asking about last night where he was playing the character with the hand axes, um, mm. I wish I had done it, but I almost un unleashed a zombie plague in it. I was so bored of the adventure path, <laughs> and I was like, fuck it. Uh, Bane is coming... Or, um, Miracle, the uh, god of death from... Um, what do you call it? from uh, Forgotten Realms is coming back in the form of a zombie plague. And he's going to manifest once enough of the world is uh, infected by it, then he's going to become this... He will manifest back in, in the in the realms. I didn't really care about that story. I cared more about just throwing zombies at my players nonstop. Uh, should have done that too. Jeez. Okay. So do uh, does everyone have all their stuff entered in then? I think I do. Okay. Yep, I'm good to go. 
All I don't right. think any of us are starting with armor, are we? I don't think so, no. No. I'm gonna just test to see if I did this right. Okay. It should prompt you for boons and banes as well, too. Yeah. It didn't seem to wanna... Hey, Cormac, since you're a mercenary... It, it may, the the, the pop-up may be somewhere else hidden on your screen, depending on how you got your... If you got your character sheet popped out in a separate, separate window, go back to the main one. Did we did figure out how the party knows each other yet? Oh, no. I don't think you guys do. Uh, well, I was thinking oh. uh, Cormac, since he's a mercenary and I'm a mercenary, he might have been the one that found me, wound me up, and put me on the path for the mercenary. Because otherwise I was a, a spy slash saboteur. Yep. Cormac, what do you think? Sure. I'm, I'm happy to have been the one to, you know, find this little weird spider thing. And, oh, oh, what's this? I mean, not good. obviously what's this, but let's see if this turns it on. Well, good. Now you have some... <laughs> Turns it on. Hey, good looking. Hey. Some form of well, I do have a token again. from a lover, so. <laughs> yes. No. Oh my god, that'd be hilarious if you guys were teenage lovers. He died, came back from hell. And then it's... <laughs> that would be actually... <laughs> oh god. Uh, no. <laughs> this game is so great. Okay, let's see yeah. here. So uh, I'll have a roleplay reason that Cormac has a sliver more loyalty from me than anybody else does. So. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, spider needs a master. Okay. And, I mean, clockworks are not unusual. Uh, they're not... Uh, I mean, it depends. Uh, but they're often not seen as actual, you know, um, uh, creatures, depending on, on, like, actual living sentient things, depending on the uh, uh, the settlement. Uh, they're, they're often seen as property. Uh, so you can... Um, it makes it useful for spying. Uh, it can be, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see here. I need, I need, I need. Where is it here? Yes, this is what I need. Okay. So the uh, the personality I rolled, the body gives you power and strength. Use it to enforce your will on others. I'm actively going to seek after people who hate spiders and scare them. Okay. <laughs> well, everyone's okay, got to have a goal. Tiny hands. All right. Let's do this here. Get a kick out of it. Let's see. Boom. Yeah, there we go. I'm not going to worry too, too much about, like, proper distances and such uh, for today. Uh, what did I do here? What did I do wrong? All right. Um, now, do, does everyone have uh, uh, images? Uh, oh, uh, Brandon, you need to rename your character. Uh, and you oh. need, Drew, you need to as well. And... Uh, you need to uh, upload an image for your character as well, too, what you, you want to have. Uh, okay, hold it. I don't really have an image right. necessarily. Uh, do you have, uh, if you do a Google image search just for, like, dwarf, uh, yeah, or, yeah, like, D&D yeah. &D dwarf, you could probably find something. And we'll take our break in a moment here, too, so you guys can see if you can snag something. Even either with the like whatever thing you're playing plus um, either Pathfinder or Path uh, plus uh, D and D usually shows up some good results here. Um, there's Cormac. There's Bug. Yeah, let's see. All right. Oof. John, is there any chance of you replacing the the image you've chosen is just the bug itself? It's going to be really, really hard to see because there's not any kind of background to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. It just like it's a very cool image. It's just that because of the way it's displaying, it's displaying as just that. It's going to be really hard to see on the map. Yeah, it's good. yeah, I can. Uh... If you want to see a, a cool, uh, do a search for Clockwork Horror uh, D and D. Uh, it's a monster from uh, what do you call it from? Um, Spelljammer, uh, that is basically a Meccano spider thing. I mean, I know you're actually, you've got a humanoid face and stuff on it too, but it is a neat image. Gotcha. Well, I can just edit the uh, the picture I have to make it a JPEG so it's not translucent. Uh, sure. It, whatever, if you can, whatever you can do to add the uh, background to that, that would be great. Because then I'll recreate your token. 
in and out. Transparency lost. Hold on. Let's see here. Damage. Nice. Okay, and... Okay. Man, all of these images portray a dwarf with far too good of a... Clearly, like, too good of clothing, too good of armor. Uh, try, the, try the token now. Let's see here. Nope. Sorry, nope. still not. Nope. Okay. okay, that's weird. Alright, well, new picture time then. Yeah, sorry, John, it's, uh, because it'll be... I'm, I just put on the map and I couldn't even see it. Uh, if you like the image, though, like uh, I can, um, if you don't have access to uh, Photoshop, I can just take that image, put it on a, a white background, and then it'll display properly. Yep, that's fine. I like that image. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, if you put it in uh, Discord or um, uh, flip it to me by email. Yeah, I'll have Discord in there. Okay. So wait, how do you how do you want us to give give you this image? Oh no no, you just go ahead and save it. The only reason is because John's particular image is displaying in a fucked up way. Oh, oh on the character, gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to let you all start with one point of fortune as well, too. Because you'll need it. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. We're all fine here. How are you? Okay, it's on Discord in the Glantry. Okay. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. I want to get this. Uh, I'm not going to do that right away. I'll do that for next time. So just if you can grab a placeholder. Okay. I mean, I don't know if we'll ever play this game again, but we'll uh, just for now, uh, we just need something to fill the slot. If you guys are having difficulty, I can try and find uh, something that I've got already loaded as an image. I've so, got something. I just need you to... got one? Okay, great. Yeah, hold on. What do I have right. for destitute dwarves? Okay. I'll go for the sword spider. That thing's pretty cool looking. Oh, that's Ooh, <laughs> I have one with a head, uh, <laughs> Andrew. Here, where are I we? I think what? I just found something. Oh, did you? Okay, great. Oh, it has his name on there. Crap. Whatever. I don't think that. I don't think the name's gonna be visible. Let's see. Let's see. Um. Oh, we got one for Andrew. Hey, we got one for. He's too far too well dressed. For for my current situation, but this is maybe how he sees himself. Maybe sure. I don't know. <laughs> same, same with my character. This I couldn't is, find this anything. Like, yeah, destitute I, enough. I got a nice one now. Nice. Okay. Well, we, we can use this one. Uh oh, and let's see here. Um, Brandon. Um. That display properly now. Come on. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do a last minute uh, ability score adjustment. I'm going to put it in intellect just because that does fit him not well. Let's see here. Cancel. So your character is well too. Uh, okay. All right. go let's so get this to display properly here and let's see let's see okay damage 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 boom yes display properly excellent okay so the yellow bar the red bar will be your damage at if and as you take it guys um and here we go perfect okay thanks john Ooh, sinister! My goodness. Yeah, that's the uh, it's a construct from Pathfinder Two. It's uh, it's uh, basically swords in a. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Is it the, the I think it's a defiler? Is that what it's called or um, something like no, that? I think it's just a, it's a weird sword spider thing. Ooh. It's not a sword spider, but it's similar. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, so I got that set up. Bug is set up. Misha, are you visible to everyone? 
Let's see here. I think I am. Visible Should be. Everyone. Oh, sorry. It's, it's me changing the uh, settings on oh, your okay. on your token. Okay. And then we got nice Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. What's the yellow cool. bar? Cool. Yellow bar is your fortune. Ah. And we'll talk very quickly about uh, what that is, and then we'll take our break because uh, I could use more caffeine. And we'll come back and see what's what brings these strange heroes together. Okay. One, one. Oh, and your character's name is Tomes, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Tomes. I'm looking at madness. I'm like, don't roll a one on your madness check. That's, that's bad. No, no, it's, yeah. There's lots of ways for things, bad things to happen to a character in this game. Uh, it, we also discovered that dying rolls are incredibly uh, deadly. Uh, we discovered this when Jeff accidentally killed Brent's character. Or Brent accidentally killed Jeff's character. He did a. Uh, he was falling from the back of a dragon, triggered a an ability that allowed him to go up and smash down doing AOE, not realizing that Jeff's character was about to die. So he <laughs> hit Jeff's character. We looked it up. We're like, I guess he's dead, and fell off a dragon into a lake. <laughs> so, thank God, like Jeff's such a trooper with, uh, you know, uh, as a player in general, that uh, he was like, no, it happened, and. Uh, Brent it would not have done that uh, had he been really paying attention to what was going on because he, you know... Um, we, uh, it sounds like a good opportunity for him to come back to the clockwork and go after his friends. There's actually... A, we actually had... Our, in our first campaign we ran of this, we had someone die and then one of the first supplements, the Desolation, actually has rules for revenants. Mm -hmm. So we had... Uh, he, one of the characters died and he came back as a revenant, but every time you come back from the dead, you gain another point of insanity. And then, just, it wasn't planned, but the funny, the running kind of joke is that that particular character was the tank, and he kept dying over and over and over again. So he was progressively getting more and more mad. Okay. And has sight. And, okay, has sight. Okay, guys. So let's um, let's take our break right now, our mid-session break, and then we'll come back and talk about what, uh, where we find our characters at the start of this pandemic outbreak. <laughs> so cool. So for those listening at home, we'll be back uh, momentarily. Hey. I'm going nowhere. What do you think so far, Arlen? I'm liking it. Yeah. I'm quite pleased I, with the random generation. Yeah, the the random stuff is cool. It's cool that there's a lot of, like... I really like character creation, where character creation is a good mix of mechanic and flavor, right? Like, I don't know. I kind of, nowadays, I'm less interested in systems that are just, like... Like here's your character now come up with a backstory because that always seems like yeah but wouldn't it be cooler if you had a bunch of random tables that i could roll on to say like here's some kind of backstory and stuff and especially i like this with you know the professions and the languages and and you know there's there's a, a good flavor to all this nice. it's kind of like what we talked about with um conan character creation that that Conan 2D20, the character creation is so um, evocative of the setting and the world, and this is the the same way. It's really cool. No. I am excited to see where things go. Yeah, the the thing about character creation it gets me in the mood to play the game with that character. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm gonna have to see how we can play this and Galantry. <laughs> find the eighth day of the week so that we can play RPGs more. That's true. Uh, all right. Oh, we, oh, John, did you get my email about Pendragon? I think maybe. Mm -hmm. 
you know, tax season, you get a lot of spam. So. Okay. You guys did. February 1st, was it, right? February 1st. You should respond if you are interested so I will, that I know how many characters to make. I will check my calendar and see what I got going on. It's Saturday, right? Saturday, February 1st in okay. the afternoon slot like we did for One Ring okay. and for the charity games. You're doing pregens, is that right? Uh, the plan is pregens. If you want to make a character, you and I can sit down and make a character. There's some really cool random character generation, like with Paladin okay. for this one. If you if you are interested, we can figure out a time to do that. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. I always like having a hand in character creation. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like it's my character. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Yeah, if, uh, if it works, I will respond and let you know. Sounds good. Mostly, I gotta wait till my wife gets up. She's sleeping, so she holds the calendar. Yep. <laughs> We're heading to a, a wedding this afternoon, so. Mm, classic. Well, you know, forty-five minute drive. Ah. Uh, um, family or fun. friend wedding? It's just a friend slash close enough to be family, I suppose. She's, okay. She was around so much we called her furniture. <laughs> but I'm like she lives like five minutes uh, not even five minutes from my sister who lives ten minutes from me and we're going in the opposite direction for the wedding like oh. you get married near your house people like to spend money on no, they want the new thing I found out is at least around here is to go out to like a place in the country that has like a whole venue set up for the wedding because then nobody leaves, right? Everybody has to stay for the whole thing if it's out in the middle of nowhere. That's true. <laughs> Especially if there's enough alcohol involved. Especially if there's, yeah, yeah. The, you, you, you know, that way you get people who will, and you just do the, the whole thing there, the wedding and the reception. And nice. anyway, a, a couple of cousins have done similar things. I like my energy drinks. Yep. <laughs> well, it's real early for you, isn't it? Well, I got up, yeah, it's like 8.39 now, so I got up oh, at 6.30 just to make here by 7, but then I stayed up till midnight. So. Yeah. Mm. Oh, God. Eh. Yeah, you guys had a nice, uh, I'm surprised you didn't get murdered by those frogs. It was a distinct possibility. I... It was definitely it's yeah, at such a low level. Yeah. It's so swingy. We've been getting know. real lucky. Yeah, my, but he he killed my dog again. Yeah. The eel did kill Kobold. Better than me though. But yeah, uh, Steve the the bard should definitely get the armor spell as soon as he can. Because uh, it's a special duration. It doesn't turn off until you take enough damage to break it. So even if you cast it a week ago, it's still on you. That's pretty good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. I love AD&D, even though it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, idiosyncratic. Yeah. It's not, it's not like walking around with two hit points, though, and... Uh, <laughs> in in that one, the one game of Wolves of God. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Oh, so you actually played you actually played Wolves of God. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got yeah. together. We did uh, John and Sean P and Brian uh, from the Discord. We all played one session of Wolves of God. It was a lot of fun. It was uh, the the stuff in it is super evocative like all the character classes there's only three character classes but each of them um one of them sort of doubles as like the sort of catch-all class and so you have basically feats that allow you to specialize um but like the the saint class you're just not allowed to attack anybody otherwise you lose all your levels in saint you, you have to actually act like a saint oh uh, yeah 
Yeah, like, I played the. Uh, I played. Did a... you go to cattle rust, uh, cattle raid? No, we did. We basically the the heroes found <laughs> out that there was a a wild boar rampaging, hurt a hunter, oh. and so they went and John healed the hunter, which was pretty cool. Yeah, I played a character with many went... contradictions. I was a priest, but also a uh, a wizard uh, that used pagan rites to cast magic. Huh. Yep. <laughs> so uh, we we went into the wilderness and fought the boar and then I was like well we're like halfway through the session so screw it I'll just throw a big monster at them so I threw that raven was seven hit dice just so you know and, we and the three one. of you guys killed it I think it mostly uh, my uh, other spell that I picked to protect an enemy from danger helped a lot yeah uh, like yeah it control. worked out really well I, I ended so there's a lot of stuff. Even, even honestly, if if you're just interested in like the period and stuff, just the research that went into all of the information in uh, uh, Wolves yeah. of God is totally worth it because it's it's as somebody who has a bit of background in old English stuff. All right, guys, are really that. cool. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, let's get to. Uh, oh, I need to grab one thing here. Death, disease, and suffering. It's happening. It is. The end of the world as we know it. <laughs> uh, okay, and you will not feel fine. Uh, let's see. That's well, it. they won't. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that kind of bravado is a real good way to get yourself a new character. Well, in this know, game. Here's her, here's her <laughs> um. But okay. I kind of think my character's seen the other side, and uh, well, he doesn't want to go back. He knows what's waiting for him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, then I need. Let's see. If I recall, the default like afterlife background in Shadow of the Demon Lord is actually not that great either. You. <laughs> no. Yeah, I can't. So I think yeah, you're on the right page on that. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh... It's a really interesting setting. Like it's, it definitely has um, uh, some fun uh, surprises in store that that kind of uh, subvert the um, uh, the normal expectations for uh, what do you call it uh, for uh, fantasy tropes. Like the um, there's not half elves. There's satyr, which are like um, they are the offspring of elves and humans, but they are like bizarre. You know, uh, with strange fairy traits. Um, halflings are pretty fucking awesome in this, actually, as well, too. Are they cannibals here? Uh, they're not cannibals, no. Uh, they're but cannibals, they are... No. Okay. Because those old buggers are terrifying. Yes, in uh, Dark Sun, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. All right, so, then, guys, let's... Uh... Moves over here. Okay. Uh, then we get to start with one of my favorite um, audio cues. Okay. So let's start with turning this down a bit here. And start with this. <laughs> so it is a dark and stormy night the lot of you it sounds like Bug and Cormac uh, knew each other uh, from before uh, but the uh, rest of you uh, are uh, unless you tell me otherwise I don't uh, Tomes and, oh, Brandon, can you change your display name to uh, Misha? I did. It says, it says mine says Misha. Uh, let me hit reconnect. Oh, my, 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 oh, my display name up here. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, Misha and uh, Tomes, I, I take it you guys don't uh, do not know each other. So, you guys have uh, this uh, um, story uh, finds you guys on... Uh, on a uh, route. You're traveling from one point in the uh, northern reaches to another, and in the course of your travels, uh, you guys, I'll let you decide what has uh, brought you on the road, why you're traveling from one place to another. 
Um, but as you uh, have been making your way along, you you find um, that the weather that has uh, the inclement weather that has been bedeviling your your travel uh, for the last uh, day has grown worse, and uh, it has caused you to fall behind. So un uh, unlike uh, the intent, which was to go from one town to another town, you found yourself uh, with the risk of sleeping on the open road uh, when uh, night was beginning to fall. Um, when you spied the farmhouse and the farms um, just off the road to the north, uh, you counted yourself uh, lucky. And the lot of you went over, and while the uh, farmer seemed strangely... Uh, defensive at first. Uh, who do you think would be the one? I think you guys all met each other on the road. Who do you think would be the one who would have spoken to the farmer to try and find, like, at least a a barn or some place that has a roof over its head to prevent you from getting drenched and perhaps sick on the uh, travels? Because you've heard, gosh, people, there's some foul affliction that is uh, making its way around all of the... Uh, uh, all of the northern reaches. Some say that a plague is coming. It probably isn't going to be a bug. Yeah. Probably. I, I mean, I might have. I might have done that. Okay. So then, uh, let's see. I'm just going to get. I lost your uh, camera there, Brandon. Oh yeah. Oh well, shit! Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I tried refreshing. It didn't. Did not come back. We have a guest appearance by Juan Bucadiz. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. That's... <laughs> do I need to do something? Hold on. Yeah, because my I don't see my thing at all do you right see... now. Okay. Uh, it's fine. You know, it might come back. Uh, Roll twenty's been a little finicky today, anyway. Let me, so... let, me re let me reload and see what happens. Okay. So we uh, assume that you guys have met uh, as you were making your way along the the road, and just not by virtue of yeah. friendship, it's just by virtue of necessity. It's safer to travel in um, in packs. So we have this grubby little dwarf. We have a fairly well dressed um, academic type, we, and we have the two mercenaries who are making their way along. Um, a uh, human and who appears to be of the northern stock, and uh, his. Uh, property, a small clockwork. Uh, so, going up, and I think the uh, these are small town farmers. So, uh, I'm going to say that they are they're more inclined to be actually of the old faith than of the uh, the new god. Um, but I'm going to roll that randomly. So, I think on a five or a six, they are devotees of the new god. No, they are followers of the old faith. So, you go up, and you can see that there are. Uh, markings, you know, um, and there's, it's the kind of things like you know those um, those strange like uh, dolls, those uh, uh, things that were hanging in in uh, Blair Witch, they kind of like uh, crudely uh, crafted together with twine and broken twigs and stuff to form the shape of men and stuff like that. Those are you kind of see hanging around um, blessings to the. Um, Or carvings, I think, to the uh, uh, the World Mother, and uh, I think you may, uh, Cormac, you've got uh, training both in magic and you are a devotee of the old faith, right? So you recognize this stuff, do, uh, Misha. Do you see yourself as having your your uh, your faith in the new god uh, proudly displayed? Um, no, no, not really. Um, okay. The and, and, and he, yeah, no. Okay, and uh, the. Yeah. Symbol for the new god is the Ouroboros as well, too. It's the uh, snake eating its tail. So, the uh, why don't you give us a will, just to get some dice rolling here. Give us a will challenge. And I'm going to give you... Uh, do you have a, a, a profession you think might apply? For, for me? Yes. Um, I don't know. The... Um... What am, what am I trying? What am I challenging here? You're talking it, it, to you're uh, trying to uh, like befriend the um, oh uh, farmer. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, um, I mean, I I might try to uh, oof, um, 
Probably not. <laughs> like, okay. I'm just going to go with that. So like, he, this guy, for, nice. for for reasons that will become apparent, you are going to have one bane on this roll. So just add okay. one when you when it prompts you, just add a bane and go ahead and give us a will challenge. All right. One moment. Um, just, just click on will. Uh, one bane. So how do I just... I think it's minus one. Minus one? Yeah. And you don't put plus one. You just put one for boons. Okay. So it's minus one. I think that did it. I escaped. You still got a ten, though. Still got a so ten. the um, you you the for the quartet of you, you see that um, um the, you know uh what what does your guy look very much like in the in the illustration there? Um, much more weather beaten, and that stuff looks really old. But okay. yeah, basically. So it takes a little bit of convincing, um, from your companion, but the the farmer did uh, agree to let you stay in the in the barn. Um, you, you could hear people within, um, why doesn't everyone give me a perception roll with one Bane, please? If you have a profession that you think would apply, go ahead and do that. So, but otherwise, just perception. I uh, would patroller help with that? Uh, yeah, so that'll offset, so no Bane. Uh, I think there's two of you guys who have patroller. You and, uh, who is the other one who's got patroller? Uh, Tomes has patroller. Tomes right? has patroller, okay, so Tomes and Bug, just a regular perception roll. Whoa! Nice. Where's, where's perception? Oh no, no, you sheet? rolled it with a a, a boon though. You, uh, the boon would cancel oh. out the bane. Okay, so, so just, just yeah, minus one. 16? Just just w make your make a perception roll without with zero. No boons, no banes. Boons and banes cancel each other out. Oh well, mine has a one. If I click on it, it's going to give a one negative one automatically. I don't have a separate. No, no, that's that's a modifier. That's not a boon or bane. Yeah. Oh okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Well, the, yeah, that one was rolled with a boon as well, though, uh, because it's a, a, yeah, I can see a plus five on it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh. Okay, 16, though, for Tomes. Wow. Okay. Well, at least somebody got okay. high. Okay. So, you Tomes, said it was one bane? what you can hear is, uh, you know, it's, if you don't have, yeah, it's one bane, minus one. So, yeah, you don't hear, you're talking, oh. you know, to the farmer, which isn't, isn't surprising. Tomes, what you can hear in the uh, in the background, though, there's the sound of at least two other people coughing quite vigorously. So, I think that when you heard that at the door, you were quite grateful to be... No, we'll stay in the barn. Um, yeah. So, he... Um, what he tells you is that um, he will lock you... Um, he's going to lock you in the barn uh, to, you know, to make sure that nothing gets taken or whatnot. And that's not unusual, you know. Um, so, and it certainly beats the alternative of sleeping in this torrent. So you guys said we're locked in the barn. And, uh, it is, um, you guys can tell me if anything happens to sort of, you know, while you are, are kind of passing the time with each other. Uh, otherwise, you know, he, um, uh, you're, he's told you not to make a fire in here. Uh, so, uh, I, I think, let's see here, do dwarves have dark vision? Uh, there I is. believe it mentioned something about that, yeah. Awesome. So you got dark vision. I can't remember. Do clockworks have dark vision as well? I'm not sure on that one. Um, let's see. As if it's... Uh, I know the humans don't. So what he'll offer you is a lantern that's within here that uh, you can have uh, lit. So it says here... Uh... Yeah, doors have it listed as dark side. I don't have that. You don't. Okay, so then you guys will need um, that lantern. So you've got the lantern set up in here, and this is a... The barn itself has, you know, a sad-looking, um, you know, uh, donkey or mule in it. It has a uh, couple of uh, scrawny, you know, uh, pigs, and um, it, you were able to find an empty stall where, no doubt, some other... Maybe there's a cow in here as well. But you're able to find an empty stall that all of you guys can kind of uh, bed down in. The hay has not been replaced in quite some time, but again, this is better than having to, uh, you know, sleep in the elements. Um, Bug, I don't think you need to sleep, do you? Uh, I doesn't it says I'm immune to fatigue, so. Yeah. So you uh, can uh, describe for us what your kind of keeping watch thing yeah, is. You'll be, be. Uh, moving around the uh, the barn, kind of like looking for spiders and looking at them every once in a while as he's keeping an eye out for the party. Okay. So um, you for danger. Okay. And uh Tomes and Misha, what about you guys? What are, what uh the, these are two strangers to you. Uh Cormac seems content to lie down and just get some rest, I think. Is, is that right? Yep. Okay. How about Tomes and Misha? 
I don't think Tomes has gotten a whole lot of sleep. Uh, he hasn't, given his uh, pauper situation, uh, does not survive the streets by uh, by uh, easily trusting other people. So, okay. Let's uh, see here. And uh, Misha. Uh, well, I think he's trying to dry out his clothes as much as possible. Which, yeah. Uh, and um. So you're hanging your cloak over like one of the stalls, maybe. Yeah, I'd like trying to bring him out, trying to, but also trying to maintain privacy as much as possible. He's probably kind of a little bit of a prude. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I think I, I, he's not exactly super talkative right now. We're exhausted. Sure, no, and that's understandable. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. let's see here. Bug pays a lot of attention to the two new guys. He doesn't say much unless you actually talk to him, but uh, he, he's kind of got that weird kind of. Jerky. He's like, he's trying to watch how spiders move so he can mimic it. Just to. Okay. All right then. What? Um, and it, this barn has has definitely seen better days. You know. Um, so I think that uh, Misha, Cormac, and uh, Tomes, uh, in spite of the the conditions, you do uh, probably the exhaustion of hiking through this shit for the full day finally gets you finds you drifting off to sleep with uh, Bug. You are um, the one who is sort of clicking and clacking around too. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you kindly give me a uh, perception ch uh, challenge as well? Okay. This is going to be a challenge, so it means it's a DC 10. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So you, um, um, I think you are, you know, you maybe uh, spied a, a really interesting, you know, uh, lattice work of, of webs up in um, one of the corners of the uh, thing, and you've been sort of, you know, crawling along on the on the wall, trying to, you know, see where where this thing is. When you hear the sound of wet footsteps falling, swish, swish, swish outside, is the farmer coming back to check on you? But with a roll that good, you didn't hit a critical. Critical is a 20. If you roll 20 or higher, it's a critical effect. Um, but you can hear there's more than one out there. What do you do? Is there any gaps in like the barn wall that lets you look outside? Can you try to skitter over there and put yeah. an eye against it and look around? Sure. So you sort of uh, you skitter over and it's it's difficult because the it's it's all pitch dark outside uh, and or pitch black and the do you make any sound at all? I try not to. Try not to? Okay. Why don't you give me a perception uh, challenge, and I'm going to give you two banes on it, because it's pitch black and it's pouring rain. Can I... No, I don't think Saboteur would help with that. So, no. No, so a minus so. two on perception? Yeah, uh, minus two, please. Minus two on banes. So, that's interesting. Uh, in spite of the bad roll, or the, uh, the uh, bad weather, what you see is one figure... <laughs> shuffling down about here. Okay. And when I say shuffling, I mean, you know, staggering in this herky-jerky kind of manner. Um, and you think you can see just the split second that you can see an another as well. Do they seem to be moving towards us or just randomly? One is moving over here towards where the uh, the door is locked up. The other one seems to be just uh, shuffling along and... and you can't quite see. Over here is completely shrouded in, in darkness, so it's difficult to tell if there are, are more. You can't hear any more, but there's definitely one making its way towards the door and one very close to where you are. Okay. Uh, well, Bug is going to skitter down the wall and move over to Cormac and try to wake him up. Okay. Sure. Things outside. Okay, so Cormac, he wakes you up and you can, he says there's something outside? Yeah, sh shuffling, jerky movements, people. People outside? Maybe people. It's tough maybe. to tell what time it is. It's definitely in the middle of the night. Um, for you, Cormac, you look. Yeah, maybe people, not anymore. Uh, so let's just think of your character in the <laughs> moment. They don't know they're playing Shadow of the Demon Lord. You would not have any reason to suspect okay. that. Well, okay. yeah. So. Well, the door is locked, so I'm not sure what we're going to do about anybody coming to visit. Okay. So, are you just leaving uh, Tomes and Misha to sleep then? Um, well... No, I think if anything kind of tries to break in, they'll, they'll, they'll hear it. Okay. So, you, um... Uh, Cormac, what are you doing then? Are you just going back to sleep? 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so you roll over, and then what you hear, basically as soon as you kind of close your eyes, you hear this, kong, 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 as the door is being rocked back and forth, the entrance to the, uh, to the barn. And I'll let Tomes and Misha, you can each make just a, a flat uh, perception uh, challenge. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll give you one bane on it. Uh, this is the, just to see if you wake up. So remember to hit minus one if you're adding a bane to it. If you roll ten or higher, then you you wake up. I thought I did it. Hold on. Oh. Nice. Very nice. So Tomes, you're awake. <laughs> oh. Misha yeah. is still dead asleep. Still, still dead asleep. <laughs> so Tomes, you wake up and you can see. Uh, you, if you look over where uh, Cormac is sleeping, Cormac is uh, is up as well too. Bug is sort of agitatingly, agitatedly kind of moving across. Something is moving against this thing here. And you can hear ah. again, splish, splish, be the first splish time. over in this direction here. Bug, can you get outside? Uh, look around for an exit. Mm-hmm. Why don't you give me a perception... Uh, that, uh, it's, it's probably a perception challenge. Do you think there's a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, profession that might apply. Um, maybe saboteur, if... Like look for a way to. I think I'd buy that. Yeah. Title. So I think. Um, yeah. Why don't you give us a uh, perception ch with one boon then? Okay. So that will negate my penalty. Okay. So. No, that's not. Oh, is it? Uh, no, no, no. It doesn't negate the penalty. Um, oh. What it is is the minus one on your character sheet is a flat minus one. Oh. The boon is a rolled d6 oh, that yeah. adds to. Total. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't find anything. Okay, so you start going up uh, the thing, and, and like in spite of this, there there is a um, the hole at the side that you were looking through. I think if you squeezed, you might be able to get through that. Look over, and I think I found one, and I started to squeeze out. Okay, so you kind of uh, uh, jam your body and start kind of wiggling through. Tomes, what are you making of all this? Um, yeah, um, not super excited about the uh, sound outside. Um, looking at the space that Bug has found, I'm assuming it's it's still too small for, for even me yet. Yeah, I think... Well, your, is your size one half, or is your size one? Uh, I see, mean, I'm not exactly 100% sure here. Oh, sure. It, it would have been one of the things that was uh, your stats. Your mm -hmm. size one half, so I think you could probably squeeze through that as well. If you wanted, I'll let the I'll let the the machine <laughs> yeah. go out and maybe poke my head through just to, like just to see. Okay. So uh, you get up and you make your way over, and I think as you get to the the whole uh, bug, will have squeezed its way through. Cormac, are you doing anything in the interim here? Um, I think I'm gonna move over towards Misha just in case if. If Misha doesn't wake up in a minute, I'm gonna shake Misha awake. Okay. Thank so, you. So you you make your way over there, and you can hear this thing. You know something is is testing the door, and you think you can hear as well by getting that close. There is a wet moaning. <laughs> That's coming from outside as well. Now, bug. As you push your way outside and you stagger forward, having freed yourself from the door, you look over. And what you see standing there will haunt you till the next time you find yourself in the underworld. Because shambling along is the torn and diseased body of the farmer. Now, this is what's called a frightening creature. So, um, with Bug having gone along and Tomes having stuck his head out, you guys both get the uh, benefit of giving me a will challenge, please. Yeah, and I deliberately made this bad worse for myself. Um, and no bane, no boon. Okay. So it's a flat will challenge. Oh no! Okay, so Tomes, insanity. Tomes failed. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, Bug. Oh, Bug succeeded. Nice. Okay, yeah. so then um, 
what this means, you are now frightened. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. On a failure, uh, so, uh, Andrew, would you give me a 1d3 roll? I think what happened with Bug, the only reason he made it is because he kind of flashed back to his afterlife and remembers the, the sounds they made somewhere in his distant memory. Yeah. And he kind of shook it off and, no, I'm not going back there. Okay. Uh, D3, so we'll just do a D6 and then have it. Oh, or you can hit uh, roll one. I mean, you can roll whatever. You can roll a, a 76.5 D6, right, yeah. with this. So. That's fine. We'll do this. Oh, pff, it, it's irrelevant. <laughs> One, okay. Because <laughs> to be one anyway. No, no, that's actually good. So what this means is you are frightened for one round. Frightened means you take mm. a bane on all of your actions. Right. So okay. you are chilled to the very core seeing this thing. This is clearly something that is unnatural. Um, I noticed if I click that affliction on my character sheet, it seems to will it automatically It'll apply automatically it? apply it, correct, yeah. So this will be... Mm -hmm. All right, so then, guys, um, this is the way initiative works in the game, is you choose... Whether you are taking a slow action, in which case, uh, or uh, sorry, you take a fast action or a slow action. If you're taking a fast turn, it means you're doing either a move or an action. If you're taking a slow turn, you take a move and an action. The way initiative goes is heroes act on fast turn, enemies act on fast turn, heroes act on slow turn, enemies act on slow turn, unless there's rules that break that. So, what you guys need to decide is, tell me whether you're taking a fast or a slow turn, um, what we have been doing is uh, marking the token with a green for fast turn, red for slow turn, and then we take it off when we act. That may not be necessary here because uh, there, you're only playing one character. We were playing multiple characters in our uh, previous campaign, but let's start with that. So you guys, once you've marked your tokens with uh, fast or slow turn, I will know. So am, I, am I up um, yet? <laughs> I don't think I am. Yeah, am I close enough <laughs> to Jake Misha awake yeah. with fast turn? I think the... Let's say that Tomes uh, has cried out. Okay. So, so you okay, have, so I'm up. You're, so you can spend your action waking him up. Do you want to do an? So, if what you want to do is an action and move, you just take a slow turn. Okay, but yeah. what, what I'm asking is, am I am I like right next to him yes. at this point? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. I'll do fast to wake him up. Okay, fast to wake up, and then Tomes uh, fast or slow? Uh, slow. Okay, so click on red. All right, then, first up is Fast Turn. Who wants to take their Fast Turn? Uh, Bug or Cormac? Cormac, go first. Yeah, mine's real quick. I'm just going to grab Misha by the shoulder and kind of shake. Okay, so Misha, you are... Oh, what the... And you've been shaken, and, and you are now awake. Um, so then take your, your uh, token or the, the this... dot off. Uh, Bug, your <clears throat> turn. What are you doing? Uh, question. Uh, is drawing a weapon the fast action? Uh, drawing a weapon is, is an action. Okay, so yeah, it's not a but, so it's a fast turn or a slow turn. Okay, so yeah, he's he's gonna draw his dagger from under his undercarriage and just okay. Point it so at you the, got your uh, yep. So you got your dagger out. That's your turn. Um, then it is uh, enemy fast turns. This thing does not act in a fast turn. Uh, then it is uh, uh, slow turns. So first is heroes to uh, tomes. What's your slow turn action? Uh, because I'm currently like crouched in a prone position, I think I'm gonna back out of that and stand up again. Okay. Uh, and I'll draw my dagger. Nice. Okay. Then, um, let's see here. Okay, so you're up from your crouch position, and are you inside? You poked your head outside, but are you inside or outside of the barn? I, I'm, I never made it out, so I'm still inside awesome. the barn. Awesome. Okay. So then on a slow turn, let me show you what is shuffling along here, guys. Boom. Oh, no. Yeah. So in a slow turn, uh, this one, let's see here, Sh uh, shambles forward and oh. tries to hit you. What is your defense, Bug? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Tough, bug. So what is, oh, sorry, what is your agility? Uh, agility is eleven. Eleven, okay. So it's going to try and grab you. Uh... I rolled a 20. Okay. Uh, total. So uh, this thing, it grabs you, and even though this, this farmer does not look remarkably strong uh, or you know anything like that, it, it, this is a very, very painful. Unfortunately, you can feel that kind of haptic feedback from your body, and it twists your body. You take three points of damage. Mm. So just add to the red uh, dot, and it'll update for your character sheet as well. 
So it's you can hear the twisting and breaking of some of the gears in your body as this thing is uh, uh, twisting you. You are currently grabbed. Okay. Okay. Uh, then uh, these things shamble forward. But I'm going to only allow them to get up to there. They're not going to be able to attack. Uh, and then this one is going to make a strength challenge to try and break the door open. Okay. Nope. All right. Um, I think that is the end of the turn, guys. So uh, everyone declare your actions. Uh, fast turn or slow turn? Okay. Uh, um, is getting out of a grab uh, slow action? Uh, getting up a grab is a is your action. There's no fast action, slow actions. There, it's a fast turn where you're doing either move or uh, taking an action, or a slow turn where you're doing both a move and an action. Okay. Um, it looks like there's a sort of enclosure here at the back. Is there another door on the back side? That's a pig pen, and there is a. Uh, uh, well, if you look over there, maybe there's a way to, that leads out there, like a little pig door. Okay. Well, I can't move, so... Uh, what you can do is escape. You can try and get out. Okay. So grabbed uh, to... Oh, shit. Here's where size comes in. I knew it was in grab. Um, they will... Oh, my gosh. Well I'm gonna no. I'm gonna try and get out of here. Yeah. So escape. You. What it means is because it's bigger than you, uh, you suffer a bane on your attempts to try and get out. Okay. Uh, that's how size worked. I know because I, I played a large size. Uh, my uh, Jotun was large, so I, I constantly grabbed shit and threw it around. Okay. Where is it here? Here we go. Escape. Um, you make a strength or an agility uh, attack roll against the strength of the creature that grabbed you, and then you uh, a success removes the grabbed affliction and lets you move half your speed. Um, it doesn't trigger free actions, uh, which are attacks of opportunity from the creature grabbed you. So uh, you do have a bane on it because of the size difference, but you can make an agility or strength if that's what you want to do is to escape. Yeah. Okay, so you get slow action from bug. So then, what? Knowing that that's that you are able to move half your move, bug. Did you still want to do a slow action or a slow turn, or do you want oh, to take a fast yeah. turn? No, if I can move, I definitely want to do a fast turn. So here's a little bit of um, um, meta knowledge for you guys. These things move pretty darn slowly. If I had, um, um, I could have charged you guys. Mm -hmm. um, these things do seem to be moving pretty slow, and you heroes always act first. Mm. Except for when they don't. So, um, everyone's got their slow actions. Excellent. Okay, so then we are up with uh, Bug is on a fast turn. What are you doing? Yeah, he's going to try and uh, wiggle himself out as quickly as he can. Cool. Give us a... Um, a I think your agility is higher or your strength higher? Uh, agility is higher. Agility is higher. Go ahead and give us an agility with one Bane. Okay. So, a negative one for Bane, right? Uh, yes. Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. So yeah, you Good, easily cool. slip out of this thing. What does it look like as you slip your way free? So Good. He's, he's squeezing me, and uh, so I take two of my back legs and just like nail them right under the arms, so it loosens his, the nerves in his arms, and I drop to the ground and I scurry towards Thomas to get under the door. Okay. So you start scurrying towards. I think because he's acting a slow turn, he's blocking the way right now, though. Okay. Okay. So maybe, um, maybe seeing that, can I like? Dart up the wall, try to get out of their reach. Yeah, what, what is your move? My um, speed is eight. Speed is eight, so it's eight yards. So I think you're probably close enough. You can start getting a part of the wall. Mm -hmm. So what I'll say is that it'll, anything attacking will have a bane right now. You're not f high enough up to be like on the roof, but you are part way up, so it'll be harder to hit you. Okay. Okay, uh, so then, guys, we have slow turns. Who wants to go first? Um, well, mine's really easy. I'm going to go back to where I was sleeping and grab my shit and get my staff ready. Okay, there you go. Um, Misha or Tomes? Um, uh, what I wanted to do is, um, am, I, am I still prone because I just yes. got woken up? Okay. Yep. Um, I would like to... Ooh, can, I, can, I, can I get up and get my shit? Do I have my shit on me? Um, I it's probably... I mean, you're... By, by which... Can that, be, can, that, well, can that count as one action? Like, I get, well, hold on. By, by your shit, what do you mean by that? Um, like mostly my mostly my sling and, and, uh, and rocks. Yeah, if you just want to grab your the weapons, yes. Uh, the because you've said that you've had your stuff out drying, so I imagine that's elsewhere. 
Like, you're not going to be able to grab your pack and, and go. No, no, no. So okay. I just want, yeah, that's like, okay, so and then is that is that going to be both my actions? That's, that's your action. That's your move to stand up, uh, and it's going to be your action to get your stuff ready. Uh, Tomes, okay. what are you doing? That works. Uh, I'm going to, seeing Buck trying to <laughs> get in, uh, I'll back up. Okay. Uh, probably about just the middle of the, the barn here is fine for me. Okay. Um, do you say anything as well to Misha and Cormac uh, are completely unaware of what's going on outside right now? Uh, yeah, I'll tell them <laughs> we've got some deaders out there. Uh, the dead! Something. The dead walk! Yeah. Okay. Um, then, uh, let's see here. Now, guys, uh, to quickly re let you know what other uh, resources you have access to, I mentioned that you guys each have a fortune point. Uh, what fortune points can be used for uh, is uh, you can use them to uh, what is it to reroll? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm leaving you in suspense as I look up. Page this 45. Stuff. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Fortune can be used uh, when a d20 rolls a failure. You can spend it to turn it into a success. Uh, when you roll a d20, you can expend a fortune to give two bone boons to that roll. And when any player rolls a d6, you can expend fortune to replace the number on the die with a d... Uh, sorry, with a 6. Oh, sorry. It's when another player rolls a d20, you can give them two boons. Okay. So you can re-roll yourself. Or you, sorry, you can turn a, d, a d20 roll into a success... For yourself, you can give someone else two boons on their roll, or you can um, make a, a six, including like damage dice, uh, or a fortune, uh, or a uh, boon. You can make it a, a six automatically. Okay, so then I think everyone's acted this round, which means these things get to go. So the one at the door still can't get through. Uh, one of them lurches forward to try and get you there, Bug. I got a bane on my attack roll here. Bat it away. Bat it away. It hits. Oh, no. Let oh. me or grab me. Uh, it grabbed you again. Yeah. So, and it's pulling you. Uh, you take two more points of damage. Um, the other things are going to stagger forward and start bashing up against the, uh, the hole in the wall. Let's see how much. Oh, my God. Oh, they've pulled away. It's big enough for a normal sized thing to get through. And this oh, one no. comes staggering up and is trying to make its way through. Okay. Um, Misha and Cormac, you have not seen these things yet. Rem just remind me that when you do see them, you will have to make a frightened check. All right. So that is the end of the round then, guys. Uh, so we are please declare whether you're doing a fast turn or a slow turn. Ooh. And then once we're marked... Awesome. So, Misha, you're up first on a fast turn. What are you doing? Okay, so I think this will count as a fast turn. Um, I wanted to see if I could climb up into the... If there's rafters in the top, I wanted to climb up and get on top of one of the rafters. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Why yeah, don't you give me... My slag and red stones. Uh, it, so that, that sounds like to me it would be a strength uh, challenge, and um, okay. I... Uh, yeah. And I think I've got a boot for the uh, my poacher background. That's something I used to climbing in trees and stuff. Something sure, that yeah, I, I buy that. Yep, done. absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So go ahead and make your uh, challenge. Right. Ten or higher right. yeah, success. Uh, strength. And one. Okay. God damn it! You have a fortune point if you want to spend it. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. so yeah, you um, so you go scrambling. You're part way up. I'll say yeah. uh, for um, uh, to, to nearly one more round of this, and you'll be up at the top. Okay, then uh, there's no adversaries on fast turns. Uh, slow turns. Who wants to go first? Um. Uh, so the Misha count your fortune point is as zero. The yellow bar oh, yeah. tracks it. Sorry, that's okay. Yep. That's for you. Tom want to do anything or Cormac? Uh, I'm. I was a. Well, uh, things have changed now. I was going to go brace the door. Uh, this thing so is, has exposed is... itself, so you're you're free to attack it if you like. Yeah, uh, I might still. Yeah, I'm gonna still run up to the door. Try to like slow down its progress, and okay. I'll try to take a stab at it with my dagger. Awesome. Can okay, give me a sec here. Um, um, what I'm gonna now also, I was, you said that the the affliction lasts one turn. 
So yes, that you're no longer good. you're no longer frightened. You've you've shaken off. Okay. Give me a second. I'm just gonna cut and paste. You can see that bar now, right? Yep. Okay. Let me yep. just uh, I'll cut and paste the rest of the uh, Walking Dead here with uh, barred one, so you guys can see what is going on. All right. So then, what you need to do is go ahead and give us an attack. I'm gonna give you a boon on this because this thing is sort of it's in a very easily you know targeted area. It's sort of trying to jam its body. This appears to be the wife who's going through. <laughs> Um, that, however, it is so close to a hit. You have a boon, you, you, the, the fortune, you can make that a six. Uh, yeah, why not? Um, I'll do that. I'm going to take the fortune. I'm going to turn one into a six. Okay. Another five. So, yes. All right, so you stab this thing. Let me see if there's any special... Uh... Okay, excellent. Oh, amazing. Okay, so you stab this thing. This thing has a really cool um, crit effect. Uh, so, you stab and it seems as it your body, your, your uh, dagger goes in and out of this thing as if it was going into a side of beef. Ooh. It doesn't make any pain reactions to it. It's just like, gah! Um, Time to go. <laughs> okay, then it is uh, either Cormac or Bug. Um, I'll go. Okay. Uh, Bug's gonna try and rip himself free again. Yeah, um, go right ahead. Come on, come on. And it's one uh, bane, oh no, a one bane, remember, because of the size difference. So just give us a d6 roll. Oh. Let's see what happens here. A 10 is unfortunately not enough. Can I turn that into a success? Uh, do you have, a, you have a fortune? Yes, you can. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll do that and then I'll scurry like. 10 to 15 feet up the Okay, you're wall. definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're definitely out of range now from this thing, and it's... Yeah. it's hit I'm like... Good. Okay. Then it is... I guess, Cormac, what are you doing? Um, so I'm going to go to this back area. Okay. Or... I'm trying to decide if I would have noticed that there's this enclosure when we walked up to the barn and therefore be able to put two and two together. Give us a perception challenge. We'll see. If you if you succeed, yeah. then you would have noticed. If not, then you Sounds didn't. Sounds good. And give, a, give yourself a bane on it because it was raining. Will do. Okay. Okay, never mind. Okay, so what do you think? Okay, so then I think I'm going to go up towards Misha to the door. Okay. And do I see... Now, because that's a cool idea, um, you, what you could do is you could spend your action seeking, right? Like trying to trying to find stuff. We could let you make another perception roll, and if you spot it, this would just be a flat perception challenge. If you make it 10, you could maybe see the, the, the way out to the pig pen then. Yeah, why don't I do that? Because that sort of goes with what you were trying to do. Like, how the fuck do I... Come on, come on. Yeah. Go ahead and All make right. a perception challenge. No boom gains. Still nothing. Yep. Okay. You want to spend a fortune? Going up to where me no i think i'm gonna go up to where misha was and be at the door but not bracing it yet okay that sounds good so you you guys feel you are trapped 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 i think that's the end of the round then guys uh oh no it isn't it's the zomboids so um first one i'm gonna give a bane on this attack roll um oh, oh, no what, what was that john nothing okay um so this thing is going to reach up uh what the one of them is just trying to get up, you know, reach up and grab at uh, Bug, but it can't reach him any longer. The one that is partway through Tomes is going to try and grab you, um, but it is. I'm giving a bane on it. So, what is your strength? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, sorry, no. What is your agility? Oh, okay. Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, no. So this thing, you stabbed it, but I think that. Uh, this thing freaked you out enough the first time, so when the farmer's wife yeah, kind of grabs out at you, you duck back, and uh, you manage to escape it. Uh, the one at the door... is testing the door again. The... Uh, what do you call it? The thing that the lock is torn on is beginning to break. One more good t uh, pull like that, and that door's going to go wide open. <clears throat> Um, and then the other one, I think, will stagger forward and try and batter against the side of the wall. Nope. And it's not... You can see its hands kind of... And I think Cormac and Misha, as the door kind of pulls open and there's a f crash of... Uh, or flash of lightning, you do get a view of what you see. So I'd like um, Misha and Cormac to each give me a will challenge, please. One... Uh, yeah, no, no boons, no banes. 
All right. Nice, Cormac. It's gonna take more than that to startle you, oh, Misha. Well. <laughs> got, 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 to, got to live up to the Lovecraft. Yeah, pee a little, so you gain pee one point of insanity. Uh, and Tomes, right. if, if I forgot that as well, too, you also gain one point of insanity. Oh, okay. But, uh... Well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. There's a difference between frightened and terrified. And I, I don't want to inflict... Insanity is, like, next to impossible to get rid of. Oh, no, that's yeah. corruption. Corruption is really hard to get rid of. Oh, uh, oh yeah, frightened, you can't take fast turns. Oh jeez, yeah. So, so am I, am I frightened now? Uh, you are frightened. You do not gain insanity. It's only if okay. you're frightened just and you frightened. get yeah. So neither Tomes nor uh, Misha are gaining insanity. You're just frightened. Give us a D three roll. That's how many rounds you'll be frightened. Okay. Um, uh, then, guys, that is the that is now the end of the round. Uh, everyone decide whether taking a fast turn or a slow so turn. One. One. I rolled a d6. Okay. Yeah, one. Cool. So, uh, so you're frightened for for this next round. That's it. Uh, then, um, everyone declare fast so or I, slow turn. So, do I have to take slow turns? Is that the rules? With that? When you're frightened, yeah. Can I think? Okay, so I have to take slow turns. Mm. Okay. okay. Excellent. Okay, then um, heroes act first. Uh, who wants to go first? Um, you guys mind if I go first? No. Nah. Do it. Okay, so I'm going to do a seek slash move. I'm going to look around this way and around the side to see if there's any, like, long shovel or hoe or something that I could scurry down, grab, and then start hitting these things at range with. Uh, hmm. So I think anything that would be that long would not work with your size. Okay. Right? Just, uh, I think you could try and find something that, like, you wouldn't be able to have a weapon with reach is what I'm saying. Okay. You know, well, how about something like large enough that I can just drop on them to hit them. Um, uh, give me a, a roll. Let's see here. Perception? Uh, yes, please. And can I use Patroller to give myself a boon? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay. Uh, that's no. Uh, but what, you will take a bane because of the weather. Oh, so... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you rolled a seven, so it's not... Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> okay. so you're, you're looking down over there and there's there doesn't... you okay. Because of the rain, because of the darkness and whatever, it's just you can't quite make out whatever is down there. Who wants to go next? Um, I could go. Um, but I've got like two or three of them here. Or is it still... Are they still kind of like Only one. Through? Yep, it's uh, only though. There's yeah. a crack in the wall. There's only one. The rest of them aren't able to get through. I mean, that dagger really didn't do a whole lot last time. Um, could I... Like, I just randomly stabbed them last time. Yep. Maybe could I try to be a bit more discerning about where I'm trying to hit them? Um, I... Like, say, in the eye? <laughs> uh, you could... So, let me see here. Uh, I think the, the challenge is, is that you're you're about as, you know, uh, proficient in knife fighting as what, say, you or I is right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, the this thing is this horrific thing that you've never seen before uh, that is, you know, tr actively trying to kind of grab you as well. So... Uh, yeah. But let's see here. Hold on. Um, I think what I'll let you do is you know, I'll give you three banes on the attack roll. But if you succeed, and what it is, is it, it's not that you roll 3d6 and subtract all of them. It's we take the highest and subtract it. Three mm -hmm. banes, but if you do hit, I'll let it count as a head hit. Okay. All right. Um. Da, da, da. So minus three. Yep. Mm. No, okay, so yeah. it's, I mean, it's, because you're, you're trying to just get, like, that one particular, you know, hit, it just it does not present its opportunity, and you kind of, it, it, um, let me see here, did, yeah, you know, any of your rolls, I was going to say, I, I actually should have given you a boon because of where she's positioned, so you would have rolled only two banes, but all of those banes would have uh, resulted in a failure. Yeah. Uh, okay, then, uh, who wants to go next? I'll go. Yep. I'm just uh, I just want to finish climbing in the rafters, yep. and then if I've got since I've got an action, I'll get my uh, sling ready to start chalking rocks yep. at whatever comes in. You got it. Give us a uh, let's see here. Give us one more uh, strength challenge. Uh, to oh, get up there. I you were... yeah. And, so, and your boon and bane will cancel out, so it's just a raw strength challenge. Oh yeah. Okay. Hold on. Uh, strength challenge. And then Cormac, you'll be up next. Yep. 
God damn it! All right. It doesn't mean you fall. It just means you're not okay. able to... You sort of slip at one point, and you're still, still kind of making your way up. Um, All right. Cormac, what are you doing? So, I've got an idea that I could basically use my action to try to finish breaking through the door and then go running past the zombie. Yeah, and like knock it over? Yeah, yeah, basically like shoulder charge the door yep. and hope the door tangles it up or whatever so sure. it can't hit while I go running. So you, uh, you, what that would be is a strength challenge uh, against a, uh, with a boon. All right. Um... Uh, and then the there is this isn't a challenge challenge like there's a target number you got to uh, beat on this thing. Um, but if you had, do you have any other things you think might apply here? Um, I don't really think so. Well, I'm giving you the boon because of your running start against this as well too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, go ahead and give us uh, a, a check. Two plus one boon. Go come on. Bang! You hit up against it. <laughs> this thing kind of staggers back. It does not give though. Okay. Okay. Um. I think that's everyone, right? Yeah, that's everything. So let's see if the uh, oh, yeah, we hungry zomboid on the other side uh, pulls, and it does not It does not get it open. Um, the one facing you, Tomes, is going to try and grab you again. 18. Grabs hold of you uh, as you were trying to get the eye, and you take three points of damage as this thing digs its claws in. And you're grabbed. Great. Um, then the other one will try and break through the wall. Nope. Um, and the other one is kind of wandering along, trying to follow where Bug has gone. Doop, doop, doop. And let me make a perception challenge for it with two Banes. It has no idea. It kind of staggers to the end and looks around. <laughs> and will be trying to pursue its interest elsewhere afterwards. That is the end of the round, guys. Uh, go ahead and declare whether you're taking a fast or slow turn. And let's go. Yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's declared? Okay. Yep. So, uh, no one's on fast turn, so heroes on the, on the slow turn. Heroes go first. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay, what are you doing? Um, so, kid, uh, is it a perception check to notice that the zombies lost sight of me? Sorry? The perception check to see if the zombies lost sight of me. You're making a perception check. Yeah, I want to know. Is it a perception check to notice the zombies just started to walk away, like he lost sight of me? Uh so is that what you're gonna do? Is is kind of people? Yeah, I, what uh, what I want to do is uh, if the zombie doesn't have sight of me anymore, I want to try and get to the pig pen and get an alternate way for the guys out that the zombies don't know about. So yeah, what I'll say is your what your action will be instead is um, it's going to be an agility roll, and if it's a stealth kind of thing, uh, so I'll give you one boon on the on the roll, and okay. then it's going to be against the, their uh, contested against their uh, perception. Okay. Oh, and they have shadow sight. Ugh. Even with a boon. Unfortunately, so you you kind of you crawl forward and you peek your head over, and there's a flash of light. It reflects off your steely skin, and this thing <sighs> it sees well, you again now. I don't go down. <laughs> no, I, I imagine not. So, what do you do for your move? Uh, I make my way back around the corner again to get above the pig pen. Okay. All right. Uh, then, who wants to go next? Could I? Could anyone object if I jump in? Go right ahead. Go ahead. Uh, can I? Back the hell up. <laughs> so yeah, and an escape. Is there like an is there an attack of opportunity kind of thing? No. Here? So you're grabbed right now. So what you need to do is um, you need to make an escape uh, action, uh, and what okay. that is is you're rolling either strength or agility against their strength, and if you succeed, okay. then you get to move half your move as part of that action, and then you still would have your move as well. Okay. Is there a bane because I'm uh, grappled? Or? I don't think so. No. All right. Nice. So what does it look like as you muscle your way free just, of this? I, I kind of like squeeze my, my wrists in between and using my dwarven strength, I just... Nice. So uh, it's off. Um, yeah. you, you can move basically your move plus anywhere in the barn as you can uh, position yourself. Yeah. Uh, I might just kind of back into the center here. Okay. And then just kind of um, yell over at uh, Misha. Um, uh they're, they're they're getting in over here. They're like draw attention to this. Okay. Um, Misha and Cormac, what are you guys doing? 
Uh, I want to finish doing what I was trying to do last turn. Go ahead, so, give us a... All right. Yep. And I'm not frightened anymore, so I'm going to take a boot on that one. Yep, go right ahead. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> With a boot, too? Jesus. Uh, that did not roll a boon. Oh, let me try, okay, yeah, let's try that again. Honestly, but with a six, you're six. only going to get a oh, nine. Oh, you're right. It wouldn't matter yeah, anyway. so yep. okay. for whatever reason, you're just fucking panic trying to get up there. <laughs> uh, Cormac? Right, I'm going to try to do the same thing as last turn. Yep. And just burst out. Right, with a, so strength with a boon? Strength with a boon. There we go. There we go. Nice. That's a crit. Um, Go ahead and give me a D6 roll. And that'll be the damage to the zomboid. Boom. Nice. Okay. So this three, I'm going to make the Zomboid make a an agility challenge uh, to see if it's still standing. It is sprawling on the ground. So boom, this thing falls down. This appears to be one of the laborers who works on here. So your action bursts the door open. Uh, Cormac, what do you can do next? Um, you still have a move left. Yeah. I'm gonna let's. So I'm trying to decide if I should just run for it or if I should stick around and try to help my allies. Um, I don't know if there's something to roll for that. Maybe a will check to see. Um, your it's your choice, your character. You play. How okay. You? Well, then I'm just gonna run. Okay. As fast as I can. How far can I get? Uh, you could probably get to like the edge of the um, crops here. All right. Okay. Well, then I'm booking it. Okay. Um, so that is the end of... I think all of our heroes have gone now. Uh, the Zomboid will stagger to its feet. Uh, the one in the that's uh, partway through will wiggle its way in here and then stand up. So that's all of its actions. This one will start trying to do the same. And then the one that was um, following you, uh, Bug, is going to once again try and listen and see where you've gone. It uh, is not clear whether or not it still knows where you are. Um, okay, then that is the end of the round, guys. Uh, please declare whether you are taking fast or slow turns. Ooh. You know what Cormac's doing? If, if I wanted to, to uh, uh, drop on my climb, just I don't know how high up I am right now. I, I don't think you'll take any damage. It, it'll be your okay. move is to so, drop down and, uh, you know... All right. If it's my move to do that, yeah. But you can take as uh, your action is you can take an action to run. Remember that, uh, so you can just like double move. Okay, that's what I think I'm going to do then. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So everyone's declared. A Cormac, you're on fast turn. What are you doing? I'm just running further. Okay. So you're or moving further. All right. Running. So you're running off. <laughs> uh, next is uh, so slow turns. So we got Tomes, Bug, and Misha. Who wants to go first? Um, Bug is going to try and uh, look through another crack in the, in the wall to see what's going on inside. Yeah, so guys, let's just maybe, um, John, you've gone first. Because of this sort of like okay. rotating thing, let's just like try and give everyone an opportunity to, to jump in with their first action. Okay. Um, so so uh, if you know what your action is, just turn. Let's go ahead and do that. But just, you know, other guys don't feel you have to go after anyone. You can feel free to take your action whenever you guys want. But, but go ahead, John. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to pretty much seek to see what's going on inside because I know they were trying to get in. And sure. my, my, my ally is... Uh, I, I think that, yeah, out. you know what? Well, let's say that there's a little, like, a little, you know, like the, you know, the weather vane kind of thing that you have, or not the weather vane, but the, the vent that you have at the top mm -hmm. of a barn to prevent it from, like, you know, icing over or whatever. You That thing's shattered, you know, with okay. age. So you kind of, you're skittering in. And I think what you can see is uh, Misha is hanging from a rafter at this point and Tomes is back, you know, back in a defensive way with one uh, zombie or one risen dead in here. And Cormac's nowhere to be seen. Cormac is nowhere to be seen, but the, the, the door is wide open. So I think that's your action. Uh, mm -hmm. So then uh, Tomes and Misha, what are you guys doing? Alright, I'm, I'm going to drop and I'm going to run it off in Cormac's direction. Uh, okay, so you drop and then start running. Excellent. I think I'm... Yeah. How far can I get? Ooh. So, um, I think I'm going to give this Zomboid a free strike against you. What? So, All right. let's see. As you're running past, let's see if I can grab out and snag you. I'm not going to... I'm going to give it one Bane on this attack. What's your agility? A 10? A 
Ted, yeah. It misses. <clears throat> it reaches out, and you, oh, you duck underneath this yeah. and go racing out into the cold. Uh, Tomes, what are you doing? I might follow suit. Um, will, I, will I have had the opportunity to see, to notice Bug coming back in, if I if at all? Give me a... So I can, like, give him a, like, a warning, like, hey, come on. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, th I think, it, it, like, if, the, if we're thinking of what the character's situation is, there's one, you know, risen dead that has just grabbed you and injured you and making its way in. The, there's that big noisy sound and you've seen another ally go off. I don't know I'm if... Rather, I'm rather distracted, yeah. 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 Makes, okay. Like, you do have Shadow Sight, so I think you may have, like, you could, if you did look up, I just don't know if you would, given... The other activity around. I don't know if you. Yeah, this shit in front of me is not normal. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I'll make my way to the door. I don't even think I'd make my way. Like I can't reach further than the door anyway. I think. Uh, I'm I uh, so water. one thing I want to say too is, uh, uh, Brandon, I cheated here uh, because uh, uh, zombies do not have triggered actions, and a triggered action oh, is okay, the is good. the uh, free strike. So my apologies for that. All right. So. Um, so I'll oh, give you a point of fortune back. How about? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so yes, you can. If you're spending both your move and your action to just move, you can. You're a little slower than Misha, but you can start making your way along too and race past that. Uh. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll probably stop around the tree here. Then I don't think my little okay. dwarf leg can be hey, that hey, far. Hey. 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 Okay. So we're gonna have. <laughs> I think everyone's going to be able to get away scot-free here, except for potentially Tomes, because this the uh, the laborer who came who got up, he staggers forward towards Tomes, and he's going to try and grab you. What is your agility? Ten. Ten. Okay. He hits. Uh, you take two points of damage again as this thing <laughs> grabs you. So I think Misha, you see this. Cormac, would you give me a perception uh, challenge with one bane? Nope, you don't hear anything. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so you're grab <laughs> tones. Um, that's otherwise. Uh, I think that's everyone's actions for the the round. This one's sh uh, shambling forward. This one's pushing its way through and standing up. This one's still trying to find where you are, bug. Uh, so, guys, declare fast or, or uh, slow turns. And I hope you all escape, because what I want to do is get you guys... We'll do the fast forward, and we'll pick your novice paths, if you survive this. Okay, fast turn for tomes. Nice. Now, if you wanted to metagame this, knowing that zombies uh, act only on slow turns... And knowing that heroes go first, what you could do, Tomes, is take a slow action, do your escape, and do a movement. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And actually, I kind of like the idea of... I, I only Your comments are only making me realize now that I've been consistently doing slow. And maybe I like that kind of approach for this character. I think maybe he's just kind of yeah. wondering and kind of... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so sure. So uh, who'd like to go first? Then? Or I guess Cormac is up first. You're running further. Just running. Okay. Uh, so he's further off Banding into the. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, then it'll be um, Bug, Misha, or Tomes. Who wants to go? I guess the one who's oh, the most oh, excited. I'm just, is Tomes. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run. Okay. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not helping Tomes. I'm <laughs> okay. You go racing up. <laughs> Tomes, give us either a strength or agility challenge. Oh, Misha. Uh, you don't have your nice stuff with you anymore. That's still in the barn. <laughs> My glass cage. Yeah. yeah. What will I do without that? Nope. Does anyone have fortune? Two I, you could, have fortune. You, you could grant two boons. He oh. literally just said he doesn't want to help me. So that's. Well, that's Misha well. doesn't. <laughs> I I think it would. You're be not his friend yet. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Zombie has like a bit of like a splinter in its eye or something that throws it off a little bit. Awesome. Maybe. And so, I'll use my fortune to help Tomes. Okay, so Tomes roll 2d6. You just need a 3 on one of them. Nice! So well, you get yourself it. free and you go racing off. Now, these things will not be able to catch you. Um, they So the lot of you are able to go running off into the night. Now... I figure they get a pretty good head start on me, but I'm going to use my patrolling skill to like track them until I catch them. Sure. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's great. 
So then, guys, what we will do is we will say that after this night, one year passes. And what's happened over the past year is, for one, uh, you guys have come to uh, trust and work together. Um, in addition, over the past year, we've seen some development of your characters and a spread of this sickness. The sickness seems to be um, uh, spreading across all of the northern reaches. This is just the first, you know, the rumors that you had been hearing have been much more... Um, dire. You've heard that the Empire itself, that the metropolises that uh, make up the uh, greatest and grandest cities in all the known world, some of them are ghost towns now. Millions of people wiped out by this plague. So, what we need to decide, guys, going if we can go back to the, um, the rulebook again, too, is which novice path have your characters pursued in the interim? Uh, those can be magician, priest, rogue, or warrior. So which path? Who has a, uh, a path in mind that their character has been pursuing? I'm so gonna go, I'm, oh, sorry. No, no, Brandon, you go first. Uh, I was. I mean, I think at this point, especially with all the uh, the stuff that's happening around him, I think he is going to st being a, becoming a priest by demand. Nice. I think he's like, well, I guess I know about religion. Guess I ought to be a priest. Okay. So you, <laughs> so you found your faith and an actual potent connection uh, to the new god. Very cool. Okay. At least by some, by some, yeah, measure. Okay. <laughs> um, what about the rest of you guys? Hmm. I'm torn between rogue and warrior. Rogue because Bug's naturally inclined towards that, and yep. warrior because he he actually took the beating in that first fight, but uh, he didn't crumple. So. Hmm. I I am also thinking between Rogue and Warrior. What I'm going to do is roll 1d6 even for Warrior, odds for Rogue. Okay. I'll take the opposite of Arlen. All right, Warrior for me, Rogue for you. Cool. Okay. okay. And then, um, Andrew, what about to Tomes? What is he? I had actually thought about Warrior as well because I think he was rather shaken by the fact that his, attack, his attempts to attack these creatures did nothing and he's like well i am i need to fix that if i'm going to survive and but at the same time he clearly had you know some raw strength and 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 uh uh, uh indefatigable determination so i thought maybe that might be like a grim warrior kind of type but if the group would like us to be more varied that's, that's you, okay. no 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 you, the, uh, why don't you, you be play yeah play whatever is you think is coolest and best for the characters so because you'll see that there's a great deal of opportunity to customize the characters especially as you you go along so then guys what um uh you can see is the warriors on page 58 the uh, rogues on 57 priest is on 56 um each of you guys get to increase two of your attributes by one uh your health will go up based on your uh, novice path as well. Uh, you each get to add a new language or profession depending on your uh, your novice path. Nice, and you got... Uh, yeah, each of you gets effectively like a healing surge type ability too. The warriors in the group, uh, when you attack with a weapon now, you make the attack with one boon. Oh, and, 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 hold on. You're going to get some, uh, you will have earned some cash in the interim as well, too. You have also managed to accumulate a total of five gold crowns each. Hmm. So you can feel free to, to look at the gear. Just remember that certain armor has a strength requirement and certain weapons have strength requirements or agility requirements. So you have the, four. The bonuses we can give to our stats, is that uh, one to two or can we put two and one? Uh, no, you can put uh, one, two different stats. Each gets one. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. So I think I forgot something here. We, we by default, can't read the common language. Yes. Oh, so when, when I picked a language before, I probably should have said I'm literate the one I actually speak. That's fine. Um, That's fine. I, I, so I think I'm going to, for this uh, language and profession, I'm going to add the language. I'm going to make myself literate. Okay. Um, so you learned your letters. Oh, and you gained mm -hmm. a power. You're, you have now a power stat of one. Yeah. Um, cool. 
Oh, and you like got yeah, uh, John. You like this? So once per round, you can make an attack roll or a challenge roll with one boon. Uh, if you attack with one boon from this talent, your attack deals one d six extra damage. Nice. Hmm. That's your trickery ability. More like sneak attack. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I rolled a four in my rogue training, so I learned techniques to help me become a better criminal. So I'm thinking I'm going to use that to, to pick up a new profession instead of a language. Yep, yep, absolutely. And I get to add a religious profession, too. Yep. All right, I'm going to randomly roll for that religious profession. Okay. You also get um, one tradition associated with your... Or one, um, yeah, mm -hmm. match tradition associated with your the cult of the new god. Yes. So it's... celestial life or theurgy. Okay. Let me. Uh, I want to. I want to. I like these professions, so I want to roll for that first. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Get a common criminal or wilderness. So one. Yeah. Week. What about um, uh, for tomes or Cormac? Did you uh, you get a common, a martial, or a wilderness profession as well? So I figure, I've been a mercenary for long enough, I know that it's useful to have somebody who knows how to patch people up, so I took the common profession healer. Awesome, cool. How about you, Tomes? Yeah, I'm gonna roll uh, <clears throat> Admittedly, not quite there yet. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure what I would oh, this want. Is, this is perfect. So I rolled for Wilderness, and I got an 18, which is a tracker. Nice. Uh, for those of you who are... Um, uh, who added to their strength as well, too. Remember that your health is calculated with your strength, too, so if you bump your strength up by one, be sure to bump your uh, health up by one as well. Thanks, I, I did do that. Okay. Oh. Uh... Kevin, here's okay. the thing. I rolled, for my, I rolled for my random religious profession, yeah. and I got initiated the old faith, like, twice in a row. So here's so here's what I'm, th here's what I'm thinking. What if you think... The new that, god's like, full of like, shit. Like, yeah, well, no, he thinks that the old gods are, are like the only. I gotta take him down from the inside. So he's pretending to be a faith of like an, a priest of like the old gods in a way of like converting people to actually to the new gods. Okay, so then yeah. I, th I think the like to gain the actual access to the power, you do have to have actual faith. So you're we would count your traditions as the new gods' traditions, but you yes. could have the trappings and whatever else of the. Yeah, so I'm totally pretending to be an old god face so I can get people out of the real shit. Like, love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it. Okay. Like how does um, how does SS compared to uh, the, how does the monetary breakdown work? Um, like so it says right at the start of the equipment chapter, oh, uh, it's 10. So 10 silver shillings uh, make up one gold crown. Uh, so effectively you got 50 silver shillings, 5 zero. Okay. Uh, I apparently studied fighting techniques from a master warrior. Well then, I cool. was definitely paranoid. Yeah, <laughs> I need to improve this. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the warrior training. We could actually roll that too. That's that's or you each yeah, of the. That's, that's what I got. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, Arlen, give us a D six roll. A two. Spent your time in service to a knight as a squire. You learned to fight, ride, care for your gear, and conduct yourself in a proper and noble manner. Mm. It's a weird opportunity. Maybe it was a crusader too. Because if they're all on their way up to the northern uh, things. Uh, John, give us a d6. Oh, for the rogue thing? Yeah, for rogue training. Yeah, I think I rolled the one where I increased my talents to be better criminal. Oh, you said that. Oh, sorry. Okay, and then uh, Brandon, give us a d6 roll. D6. Five. Five. You have a covenant with your deity after experiencing a strange dream or weird encounter in the wilderness. Well, that certainly fits. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Question about armor. Um, since clockworks have a de uh, starting defense of 13, and armor makes your defense, your agility plus whatever, uh, that clockworks don't really need armor, do they? Um, well, it depends on how much armor you want to have. If if it's not better than what your natural construction is, uh, okay. then yeah, you uh, uh, you yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, I don't need armor. Mm hmm. He said five gold crowns. Five gold crowns? Uh, yes, five gold crowns. That is a lot of money. Um, until you look at the cost of armor. Yeah. 
That's that's true. <laughs> yes. Well, I can't. I don't. I can't even use the really heavy stuff. Yeah. I don't have enough strength. So, but I've I've got some brigandine armor now. Awesome. And. Oh yeah, and actually, well, you know what I'll do is I'll restrict the um, uh, the gear to the uh, common. So C for <clears throat> under availability. Okay. All right. Is the crossbow too big for me to use? Unless it says size one. It says hands two. No, you, you should be able to use it. I'm getting the crossbow. So it's, we got one gold crown. Yeah. I was kind of trying to come up with a religious parable for that uh, glass cage, or an academic parable. <laughs> Guess I don't have to anymore. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. So then we, um, uh, apart from picking your tradition for magic, uh, Tomes, what did what did you go with for your extra profession? Yeah, tradition. I I I really don't know what would be. I'm going through some of the looking at the professions now. Yeah. Um, I just I'm not sure what uh, is appealing to me here. Mm -hmm. I can do uh, I can know I can do martial I think is what I'm allowed to do. You, no, right? you martial, common, or wilderness. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. What is the common? Oh, I guess actually, if I trained under um, a weapons master. Yep. It might make sense to do something along that line, so maybe I'll stick with Marshall. Uh, maybe not a squire. I don't want to literally follow the same path. I could maybe be a mercenary. Yeah. Maybe I've found <laughs> better. It certainly beats begging on the streets. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, uh, Cormac has uh, the mercenary background. Does someone else have mercenary as well, or professional? Yeah, so B Bug and Cormac have worked as mercenaries, so the three of you could have worked together uh, in the interim as well. Sure. That'll work. Holy cow, pistols are expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The armor was the thing that really got me. I, I kept for my... Because uh, a Jotun, you have to spend twice as much for it, too, because you're large. Gotta pick a weapon here better than a dagger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is there a repair kit that I can get? <laughs> can I... Is there... So you said only common items. Only common, that's right. Okay. For, for first level. That is... Okay. That. I guess I will play along anyway. <laughs> what was it that you were going to get that you couldn't oh, get? Oh, I was just going to get a sword instead of an axe. Um, which... Swords are uncommon? Swords are uncommon. Oh, geez, for the military weapons. Yep. I, I will allow the exception for that. All right. Yeah. Thank you. It's only plus one damage. Well, and you're, you're a warrior, too, so. Yeah. Yeah, 1d6 plus two for the sword. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, no lockpicks for me, boo. No, you can't afford it. <laughs> oh, I can, but they're rare, so. Oh, shit, yeah. Um, I'll, If you've got the money for it, I'll, I'll let that be an exception as well. Okay. It fits with your your uh, n your novice path. Right, I'm going to get two sets. Yeah, so same thing with uh, with you, Andrew. You, if you want um, any uncommon or rare items that relate to your profession, I'm fine with you taking that. Uh, okay. Uh, I might go with... Uh... With oh hammer oh okay never mind I guess I'll go with an axe. Okay. Uh, Bastard sword or warhammer. It, so what cumbersome does is it imposes a bane on your attack roll, but as a warrior you get a boon on it, so it nuts out. Yep. Uh, I uh, use the bastard sword a lot as uh, a uh, as my Jotun, and it's fucking awesome. Ooh, that's interesting. Cool. Okay, so guys, I think that uh, kind of brings us to uh, the end of our uh, pickup session here. So, uh, man, what? So, what, for those who haven't played uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord before, what did you guys think of the uh, 
the crash course with, of uh, Robert Schwab's masterpiece here. I like it. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I'm, I'm eager to explore the setting, actually. Oh. Yeah. It's kind of a fun setting. I, I really like set DCs and you just add boons or banes to make things more or less difficult. Mm -hmm. That makes it really easy to see whether you succeeded or not. Yeah. I, I've always yeah. been a fan of the progression system, honestly, in the ra in the random character stuff yeah. too. Like it's I love the fact that it's an inverted funnel where it's like the the you don't get that many choices at the beginning, but once you start getting into the expert paths, it gets you get a lot more choices. Yeah. Um you and have... I think that's exactly how games sh should be because you like you learn the system as you're playing and then it's like Oh, Absolutely. now I actually know what know what choices I'm going to be making. Yeah, as opposed to like let's hit you with all the choices right up in front, like most RPGs do. You know, then you end up regretting some of the. Sorry, Kevin. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, and then you know you run that risk of of uh, of regretting some of your decisions down the road when you realize, oh, maybe my rogue who put all of his stats in charisma and has twelves and everything else is probably not great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah. you know, and you can't undo it, right? So you got to kind of, kind of go with it. But yeah, this is interesting. yeah. The um, the amount, the the way that the game um allows for a lot of really fun uh theory crafting and regular, like how each level you get some neat decision you get to make about your character, uh, it is really cool. You know, I I've um I've if the everyone I've introduced the game to uh, thus far, I've I've had no one say like meh. You know, uh, everyone has been a fan of the game, and especially when you start playing, even players that because the the uh, the complexity about picking your paths is very very low. Um, even people who normally don't dive into that part of the game are still in there. You know, like we had um, a fourth edition AD and D uh, AD D a fourth edition D and D campaign that it was just not working as fourth edition, so I switched over to this, and the. Uh, two players who normally let other people build their characters for them fucking dove in with the character creation rules in this because it's so easy to just pick a path and and pick an you know pick an expert path or novice path expert path master path and really create a unique character uh, so it, it was it was interesting to see that it makes it a more accessible way of in, of interacting with that uh that uh, theory crafting component of character creation that sometimes can be intimidating for people who aren't really, or just sometimes can just be boring for people who don't really like engaging with that part of the game. And then for the theory crafters, there's tons of cool things you can mix and match to make a really unique character. So cool. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the, it's, it's one of my favorite games of all time. So it was a happy excuse to get it back to the table and no one died. <clears throat> I'm a little disappointed Ah, <sighs> no fatalities. Yeah. But next time. Next time. <laughs> so cool. All right, then. Uh, so for those listening at home, uh, thanks so much for joining us for this impromptu session of um, Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this session. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the game, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below, and we will endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, alternatively, you can reach me on Twitter at Dungeon Musings. Uh, you can reach me... Um, by email at dungeonmusings at gmail.com and you can find us all on the Dungeon Musings Discord server which you can find a link to in the description of the video. You can also find a link to the Hero Save Villages campaign which is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. Um, it uh, benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity which provides direct uh, benefits for over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children from around the world. Uh, they're active in over 130 countries. Uh, they are a really excellent organization. So if you did enjoy the session or you enjoy the content in the channel, I'd ask you to just consider clicking through and learning a little more about Hero Save Villages and the SOS Children's Villages International Charity. Last but not least, I want to give a big, big thanks to my players. And I want to reemphasize, it is not just any player, any group of players who is happily roll with a brand new game they haven't played before, first thing in the morning on the weekend as well, too. So a big thanks uh, to Brandon, Andrew, John, and Arlen for, once again, being just fucking terrific players. We'll be back at, in Galantry in two weeks' time, but I greatly appreciate you guys to, uh, willing to take the plunge into a brand new game. So thanks, guys. No problem. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Then, 
until next time, folks, uh, thank you again for watching. And um, while uh, we hope that we, uh, your life doesn't find you under the shadow of the Demon Lord, hope you're having a really great new year. And so we see you again. Happy gaming. <laughs>